everybody! Gosh, I always miss it. Hello, everybody. Welcome to It's a Long Story, a uh, thrice weekly campaign set in the wonderful, beautiful world of Imea. Uh, we are here with our awesome friends, our old school, the OGs, the oldest of the bunch, just everything old. Uh, the Monsters Shut up. Crew. <laughs> wow. That was not Unbelievable. nice. Unbelievable. Uh, uh, yes, everybody go ahead and take a look uh, at the camera wave and say hi. 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 Or what hi. did they say back in the olden days? Cheerio. Hi. Hi. Oh, hi. hi uh... Somewhere in the olden days. Yeah, they said that. Somewhere. <laughs> um, yes. So welcome. Uh, we are here with the Mongoose crew uh, for our Wednesday night campaign, uh, jumping into uh our tales of imea uh uh we have a couple announcements coming up front but i just feel like this this deserves its own place in 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 time and 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 just joyous occasion here uh, uh miranda can you please show what present you got recently yes uh, i can from laurianne yes i can okay are you guys ready it's a wombat but it's not just a wombat okay it's a wombat with cube poops I think I'm most excited about the cute poops. I was most excited about them, too. When I originally sent Joe a picture of it, there was only three poops. And then I sent him another picture. I was like, I made more. I couldn't help it. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, Lorianne, thank you. I, mean, I don't have to say thank you. Uh, but yes, thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. You're welcome. Um, awesome. So, yeah. So, for everybody else, uh, for those of you who are watching uh, now, I have a couple of announcements kind of just uh, handle up front. Uh, so... Uh, even if you've been watching the past couple weeks, uh, this is probably going to be uh, old news here. So feel free that if you're watching this later to be able to kind of skip uh, maybe like a minute past this part. Um, or uh, if you're watching live, this is a good time to probably go grab a drink or something. Um, but uh, for everyone else who has never seen this before, uh, we have uh, so uh, for Tales of Imea, there's a there are three campaigns that we have. So right now at this at at this moment in time, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday, we have three campaigns that are running in the same world at the same time. Uh, so it's a homebrew world, and there's a lot of uh, chaos and fun stuff that's going on, especially now, and it's only going to get crazier um, uh, as worlds are colliding. Uh, well, a world, people are colliding in the same world, right? Um, uh, so one of the uh, one of the big things we wanted to do. Uh, first and foremost, uh, is to actually add one more campaign to that because the chaos just isn't enough. We need more. Um, so we need more players. So if you're watching this, if this is your first time watching this, or if you watched a couple episodes now and you are kind of like, you're not really sure whether or not you want to jump in or not, feel free to just, uh, I'm going to put a link on our, uh, our new Tales of Imea campaign. Uh, so feel free to kind of take a look at that and just like click on that to be able to kind of just uh, talk with me and say, you know, uh, you know, ask, feel free to ask questions, whatever, what have you. Um, but if you are interested, it is going to be available in the link. Uh, this is going to be the fourth campaign in Imea. It'll be taking place at the same time. However, it's going to be south of South Imea in a place that is called the Isles. Um, it's going to be really fun. A lot of cool nautical shit. Uh, uh pirates uh treasure tropical uh, stuff uh um new monsters things like that uh so if you're interested in that that will be posted uh here in the uh the private chat here in a second um also on top of that uh for those of you who uh have or have not seen um <clears throat> Uh, last month, we did a, uh, a play test for a game called Candela Obscura. So if you're a Critical Role fan, they, uh, that's a, a game that is part of like the Darrington Press sort of uh, uh, design. So it's a, it's a game system that is designed on a cosmic horror high RP uh, level. Uh, so we, we designed our own sort of version of that, the homebrew setting of that that is called Shadows of the North Shore. And uh, last month, we did a three episode playtest of that uh, kind of like a little mini adventure. Uh, so one, uh, feel free to go check that out. Uh, it is on YouTube uh, under Shadows of the North Shore. Um, but also we are uh, on top of that, we are also looking for people to be able to join in a full campaign of that. Uh, so if you're into the like heavy cosmic horror stuff, uh, if you are interested in the turn of the century, like 1900, so te technically 1901, Salem, Massachusetts uh, area, um, with a lot of uh, cool little uh, 
cool little horror stuff. Uh, some of which is actually based on like actual Massachusetts folklore. Um, because I, uh, as well as, uh, Lorianne, uh, are, uh, Massachusetts natives. Um, there so better we, not be uh, any witches in actual Salem because you know that that didn't happen there. Just saying <laughs> happened in Danvers. Listen, there's a, there's a, there's a whole thing with that. All right? Danvers said, we don't want it. You can have it, Salem. You can monetize we it. We don't want it. You can have it. Um, yeah, there's a fun whole fact for all you. Yeah. Yeah. Fun fact. Um, uh, oh man, so many fun facts. Now you're making my brain go down that way. All right. So if you're interested in joining in that, we are going to add that hyperlink into the private chat as well. So feel free to take a look at that again. Uh, feel free to just jump in just to click the link, just to be able to talk to the DM, which is me to ask any questions. Um, and, uh, I would be happy to answer those. Lastly, uh, we are in October. We are officially celebrating Halloween starting three days ago, the beginning of October. Um, Yes, uh, I don't know what I don't know what Jamie's doing over there, but it's yes, to his decorations. It's oh, Halloween. oh, oh the Halloween decorations. Okay, cool. Your your screen's too small. I couldn't see you. Uh, you're too small. All right, that's enough of that. <laughs> Click. Um, you forget my power. Uh, yeah, see, I just took out Mike. Um, no, uh, remember, I have so, too many uh, Joes in my life. So <laughs> that's right. We already talked about that. Anyways, gosh, what chaos tonight. Um, sorry. So it is Halloween. Uh, so we are going to be uh, celebrating that by doing a uh, drop in, drop out mini campaign. Uh, that means you can uh, join for just a session. You can join for a couple of sessions. You can join for the whole campaign, whatever you want. Uh, you could join later, the beginning, the middle, whenever. Uh, for a uh, a module setting, a supplement setting of D&D 5e that is, uh, that is called Steinhardt's Guide to the Eldritch Hunt. Um, very cool gothic horror, uh, like uh, uh, very creepy, 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 uh, say like kind of like Jack the Ripper sort of style setting, but even heavier with, with monsters that are disgusting and weird and have multiple limbs and all this crazy stuff. I don't want to give away too much. Uh, I don't want to give too much away. But uh, also on top of that, you get to play characters that are, uh, we have a uh, custom rate, uh, excuse me, we have they, they built, uh, Monkey DM built uh, custom races, uh, uh, one custom class, a bunch of different subclasses, new feats, new spells, uh, a new pact for warlocks. Um, and of course, uh, a bunch of new creepy and scary monsters, um, all of which are 100% overpowered for those who ever played 5e before. So if you're interested in playing 5e in a D&D uh, &D 5e in a way that's like, I'm bored with my normal game and want to do something that is uh, that is a little bit more complicated, but feeling a heck of a lot more powerful. Um, and just creepy horror shit. Um, feel free to uh, to jump in on that. Same idea. That will be included in the private chat for those hyperlinks there. Um, and we need players. So please feel free to jump in, even if it's for a session. Um, and again, you can always ask me questions on that. <sighs> did I get everything? Did I miss anything? Was that it? Did we do it? Cool. We did it. Awesome. So uh, as we jump into tonight, I'm very excited. Uh, uh, we're going to give it up to our royal scribe. Lorianne, tell us where the Mongoose crew uh, have left off. Okay. So we started with Milo, who um, had a nice um, breakfast in the morning um, at the... Um, the place where he's at, which we learn is called, is it the family? Did I get that right? Yes. Or no? Yeah. Okay. So um, from there, Milo um, speaks with Cabbage and they discuss the other South I man who um, happens to be there as well, who Milo assumes is Demoran and Cabbage offers to bring Milo to go speak with him. On the way, they run into Tomb, the um, young turtle, um, who Milo offers to help after seeing him roll into something very hard. Um, so on, after he helps to him out a little bit, um, Cavish brings Milo to the tree hut and takes his leave after Milo says he can go in alone. Um, uh, Milo walks in and is surprised because Demoran is not there, but Aesop is. Um, Aesop is a little freak and is carving <laughs> mongoose <laughs> statues out of wood. Oh, hold on. I remember this might be for people who have never seen this, this before. Aesop is a child mind. and is really creepy and is a little freak and He's is carving... Mongoose crew statues out of wood. 
he um, tries to egg Milo on to quote unquote stop him from doing like the inevitable, which we're pretty sure you can infer is he's going to like try and kill us at some point. I don't know. Um, but Milo is a nice man and does not murder a child in cold blood. Instead, Milo uses Know Your Truth on him and um, realizes that Isep needs to be mad at someone. He's had a lot of pain and suffering in his life. And that list, unfortunately, includes Milo and the Mongoose crew, among others. Milo then, again, very sweet man, <laughs> asks to hug him, but it's not received well. So Milo slowly backs out of the room. Uh, then we, we uh, dive down into Honoria, where um, Eldrin and Catherine... Um, Catherine is Eldrin's um, frenemy, um, have a talk that jumps between arguing, insults, and sincerity. We learn Catherine can't walk and, um, after being resurrected by Eldrin. And then um, Catherine notices that Eldrin is upset after mentioning after she mentions the Queen's trident and the fact that Eldrin has it and um, asks Norris to leave so she can speak with Eldrin privately. Uh, that leads to Eldrin opening up just a little bit and talking about her mom leaving to clean up her mess on land um, and then laments that all she was left was this trident in a letter, which Catherine then snatches and reads, taking a lot longer than Eldrin initially expected from a letter from her mother. So um, after Catherine's done reading it, she tries to pick a fight with Eldrin, uh, but it doesn't work. Ultimately, it, And ultimately, Eldrin realizes that she's trying to be a friend and... Um, Catherine tells her to read the letter and just to know it's going to be hard to still be mad at her mom after reading it. So they have a heart to heart about their friendship. And then Catherine um, tells Eldrin she's going to accept the high priestess position. So then Eldrin and Noros make their way back to their room in the um, Enorian castle to find Guar sitting on their bed. Uh, Guar immediately gets distracted by um, Eldrin's new trident and asks to see it. Um, while that's going on, Eldrin gives Norris her old Bident since he can utilize it better. Um, Eldrin and Guar, as they always do, argue. Um, and Eldrin tells him she's upset that he, quest he questioned her ability to pray, basically. Um, more arguing ensues, and then Guar asks Eldrin if she knows about the Shadowfell. And she tells him what she knows is an in-between place between the Celestial Plane and the Hells. And Guar tells her that that is where he's pretty sure where Brunhilda is trapped and he's going there to save her and asks her to come along. Uh, Eldrin then tells him about Winona and that she um, and Norris are going to go tomorrow to get her so they can try and save Wilbur. Um, and then Guar starts talking about feelings and Eldrin becomes uncomfortable and she tells him she values him and then they hug and then Norris comes in and kicks Guar out. Um, and then Guar goes to, to talk to Erlen, the former high priestess, to get some more info about the shadow fell from her. Um, he learns that he learns stuff that he kind of already knew from Zaris, but basically that it's ruled by the Raven Queen and who should be avoided at all costs, um, and that magic works a little differently there. And then we have Saren, who enters into um, combat, which was very exciting. And after taking on all of the slavers herself, Huxley finally helps her after she is bloodied. And then they finish off the remaining slavers and work together um, to save Gerard, um, who is floating on the ship in his cage. Um, we learn Huxley can't swim. Um, and the, the spell that's latching, there's a spell that is um, latching Gerard into this cage. And Saren um, doesn't want to accidentally blow up the boat with him on it. So she's able to get the, with Huxley's help, the crate hanging from a tree um, and then cut some wires that are all brown to her, even though Huxley said they should be colored. Um, and luckily doesn't blow up the boat, but is able to cut the engine and fly off of it. Saren and Huxley are then um, able to pull Gerard safely to shore. He's still in his cage, so she has to figure out how to open it. And then Saren sadly realizes that there's no Gaston, which is Huxley's little friend that we always see with him. Um, but he's not anywhere to be seen. So, and then we go 150 years in the past to um, Honoria, where Wilbur is trying to brainstorm with Cerulius on how to get him back to the present. Um, Cerulius isn't really helping that much, um, but we do learn that 150 years ago, so, well, the, the present, but the past for us, Cerulius was on the shores of Raven Rock, um, and that, um, and Wilbur wants to see if that, that Cerulius can help get this Cerulius back to the present day. Um, but Cerulius doesn't want to put Zaris in danger in order to do that. So um, 
Wilbur has some real talk with him. Basically, if he doesn't come back, she or not she, Miranda's a she, Wilbur, <laughs> he might not exist and his family might not exist. So he has to come back. So um, Cerulius kind of agrees, well, obviously agrees to that. And then Wilbur realizes very sadly that Cerulius is going to have to experience everything again over the past 150 years to make sure that everything stays the same. Although I will say he did say maybe I'll be a better father in this, but he can't, Joe, because he has to make everything the same. <laughs> <laughs> that was my thought when I was rewatching. I was like, you can't be a better dad. You have to be shitty. <laughs> um, I can't hear you. So I'm okay. going to keep going. Yeah, now you can hear me. Okay. Uh, yeah. Like I, I, there's, there's a lot of discussion to that, but yeah, he kind of, <laughs> he kind of can't, he has to do everything he pretty much exactly can't. the way it's going. Yeah. yeah. But it's, it's okay, the we can talk worst. About this later. But yeah, there's we can another Cerulius there. So I'm confused. Like whatever. Um, so, uh, Wilbur and Cerulius have a heart-to-heart -heart moment when Wilbur realizes this, and um, he asks um, Cerulius what um, the woman that he fell in love with, what her name was, and we know that this is Broomhilda's mom, and it was, was it Rue or Brew? I couldn't tell. Brew. Brew. Rue. Brew. No, no, no. Brew, as in Broomhilda. Oh, Okay. Um, so <laughs> Winona reaches out to Wilbur with the assistance of Eldrin's bracelet, um, and basically a very, very painful and frustrating conversation, at least from Eldrin's perspective, in, <laughs> um, ensues of Wilbur trying to give Winona direction of what to do and where she needs to be in order for Wilbur to come back. Um, and this all happens while Noros and Eldrin are injured and poisoned, uh, because of their trying to bring Winona back here and meeting a different group. Um, and then Winona <laughs> proceeds to mother Eldrin a lot. And then um, w it finally stands in the place that she's supposed to stand in. And Zaris from the past does a spell so that Wilbur is able to make his way back to us. It's very exciting and heartwarming. And Guar happens to come to the temple because he was, he, because it was only supposed to take Noros and Eldrin five minutes to come back from Celeste and it didn't. So he was, he came looking for them. And so he's reunited with Wilbur as well. And then um, at the end, we um, see, none of us know this, but I guess viewers do that. Zaris loses his memory of what happened in meeting um, Wilbur and becomes the Zaris we know and are frustrated with today. Um, and then he finds the stairs to the Marid that he had befriended and, um, now we know 150 years ago. That's a long time to have a friend who we killed. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you should have been checking in on his friend every Hence once in a while. The, uh, well, I didn't say he didn't know. <laughs> I didn't say he didn't know his friend was different. Right? So. <laughs> You're different, dude. To be fair, he did a very thorough check-in after everything. Yeah, he did. He did on his body. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> um... Cool. Um, that was awesome. a long recap. I'm sorry. That was a long recap. That's okay. No, no, no. I, I, I would always err on the side of long recap as we assume that we're going to have uh, hopefully more new viewers than than old viewers at this point. So, um, so uh, totally well, it's fine. hard with us uh, all separate. It'll it'll get more condensed as we get together. I feel like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and speaking of that, uh, what did we get on our our die rolls? We had uh, I know uh, uh, Saren was 13. Had a six. Six. Uh, I got a uh, so I got a thirteen on the second roll. You're <laughs> killing me. But he got uh, a fifteen on the first. He got a fifteen. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. that's that's a good point. No, that's a good point. Yes. Uh, so you will still be going first on that. So, uh, cool. So, uh, jumping into our, uh, I mean, it doesn't matter. It's you're all gonna get you're all gonna get a turn. Everybody relax. Um, <laughs> uh, we're going to jump into our whoops, our underwater. Uh, our underwater friends in their underwater home. Uh, well, in someone's underwater home, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, cool. All right. So what I'd like to do here is to kind of actually uh, blast uh, a certain amount of time forward. It doesn't have to be, I'd say, hours forward. Um, it could be an hour. It could be four hours. It doesn't really matter here. Um, but pushing back to a point where you are uh, 
uh, wherever you guys want to meet, wherever you feel comfortable meeting, I assume Eldrin's room, but it could be somewhere else if you wanted to. Um, I think, yeah, Eldrin would have told them all to take time to, you know, I mean, Wilbur has been gone for a little, well, a little bit, but um, she would have told them all to, like, take some time to, like, rest in their own rooms and things like that, and then when they're ready to come meet in her room. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so say if you guys wanted to take kind of time to yourselves, you certainly could. Uh, we don't necessarily have to roleplay that. But we'll say we'll say we'll cut to uh, the scene where you were all kind of together, sort of in a in a sort of like a circle sort of setting here. We have Wilbur, uh, the wombat. We have Eldrin and Noros, uh, uh, the 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 Triton couple just kind of sitting probably on the bed. Um, and then Guar, our half elf. Uh, giant in many ways uh, paladin warlock um, uh, and Winona right and Winona, Winona. yeah and Win- uh, Winona and Wilbur I think are probably like kind of sitting close together uh, uh, in this room uh, and I think everybody just kind of like looks around at each other in a slightly awkward state let's spend some time and what would you guys We'll say we'll, we'll start the role play there. Um, as far as uh, anything that you'd, you'd say you guys wanted to kind of get out of the way in explaining, you certainly could. Um, but this is this is an, an area here where we say, okay, we have some of the crew together. What's next? Um, Eldrin looks at Wilbur and says, um, what happened? We're, your mother said you were in the past. How is that even possible? And why haven't we said anything to each other for three hours? <laughs> Guar looks right at the camera, breaks the fourth wall. Oh, we're just starting to talk now? Okay. <laughs> I don't know how I got there. I was at the grove. I heard what I assume you guys heard. Everyone's heard it, apparently. And everyone's heard. And all of a sudden, I'm poofed away and I'm on some weird island and Cerulius shows up. Like past Cerulius? No, like present day Cerulius, except he is not well. But he wasn't even at the Grove. I know, so I don't know I don't know why he was there or how he got there, but he has like he doesn't have his powers anymore he's not he's not Cerulius anymore well where where is he now well that's a really good question so I why she asked it took man I really missed you guys missed you too Wilbur (laughs) so So, so he's there. But really, he's not... di- it's been really difficult just being me and Guar. I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna be honest right now. So I'm, I'm just really happy you're back. So, oh no, I, I, I know. He doesn't have any, any powers. Isn't it good that he's, he's humbled? Uh, no, he doesn't. I don't think it's good that he's humbled. He doesn't look good. He's not did you explain, well. Did you explain that he doesn't have any powers? She just, yeah, he just, okay. yeah. You know, you know why he was there. Yeah. So, are, are um, you, is Wilbur choosing to like just not mention that to the group? Or no, um, Wilbur would get into that. I'm gonna mess up these names because there's too many C's. So he <laughs> was. He was in Celeste or Celestia, which is it? I don't remember. So Celestia, Celestia. is okay. the, is is essentially heaven. It's D and D heaven. So he was at. What Wilbur knows though is that he was at least at the gates. Mm-hmm. Maybe not gates. necessarily inside. Oh. Like this is important. This is why I'm saying you want to probably want to mention it. I- yeah. I had a vision Guar of has, this. And Guar hasn't explained this to Eldrin, that he saved Rumhilda. Right. He explained it to Zarus. Okay. Right, right. His well, new best friend. Because Zarus is nice to me. Okay, so... Um, mm. <laughs> so, 
I, I had a vision of this. I. And then I explained the vision. So why didn't for, you? For new why people. Why did you tell me this? Because you were mad and angry and stomping around and and I, and Zaras was actually we were trying to figure something out. Stomp around. Well, you, you really can't stomp under here. He's kind of more of like a, like a, like an angry float downward. Uh, but I look at Norris. I say, when I'm angry, it's elegant. I don't stomp around like a child. I don't know, dear. Apparently, you've just been here with Guar the whole time. So. Anyway, so I saw this vision, and I, I, I think I saw Brumhilda being carried into the gates, but I knew that if she went through there, she would cease to exist. And so I somehow summoned Celeste. My Celeste, not the Celestia. Not um, the Celeste that we were just at, where we met that really horrible group. No. Well, oh, I haven't really told you about that yet. Uh, uh, we'll get into that. Horrible, they weren't horrible. horrible. They're the ones that, why we were poisoned and thank you for like, helping us. Did they do that to Noros? Yes, it's and a you. long story. And me, yeah. I mean, oh, my lights went off again. Why does this always um, happen? <laughs> it's dark in the water. I literally work from home all day, and this does not happen that, until I'm playing D&D. Is that because we're talking about, uh, yeah. So we're going to talk about today's sponsor, Philips Hue. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Uh, so, so yeah, I had a, and and then and then Celeste like went and like obliterated the the the, the celestial that was carrying Brumhilda, and she fell, and and now she's in the shadow fell. I think, I'm pretty sure. No, I'm so a, I'm I, very sure. That's something I, that I need you to be sure about before we go there. But we can put a pin in that. That's something I heard on land before. Well, and that's what I think happened, is I think that Cerulius was there to save Brumhilda. So I don't know if he made a bargain, or if he was attacked, or what's going on. I, so he's back, though. He's just not here with you? How yeah, did he I don't, come back? Well, okay, so that's... I don't, I don't know how he came back. So I said to him, I need to know where you were at on this day 150 years ago, because you will probably know how to get yourself back to the present. And he said, I know a way, but I can't tell you. You'll find out someday. So so what you're saying is is we need to bring the Celestial back. No, like he should, he should be back. Motherfucker doesn't know how to act. He promised me. (laughs) He promised me that he was coming back. If he wasn't back, I don't think I would be here. But I'm confused. So he couldn't come back with you. Does that mean that there was two Ceruliuses at, at one point? In uh, is it were Cerulei? You, were you so, in Honoria? Is is this is it, and how how long ago was this? It was 150 years ago. <gasps> Did you meet anyone? Well, um, actually, yes. Um, I met Zaris. Um, oh, not him. Anyone from my family. <laughs> well, I didn't meet anyone because I was trying to lay low. But I okay. no, saw I saw people. Um, there was a name day celebration, and the living light had fallen, and it was pretty much interrupted because that happened. Whoa! Was, what was sur- well, it was, was briefly was, interrupted. Was Zaris is just like a, as he is now? Eldrin's like doing math on her hands and and not listening, and then goes, "What a treat! Oh my goodness, you were there for the 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 name day of um, my great grandfather, or I think my grandfather? No, my father's father? Someone? Well, you well, were there. We you, That's we amazing. Need you to be, we need you to be sure about it before we, we move forward with this conversation." Guar. You're asking us to go to a place that is extremely dangerous. So I just want to make sure, you know, we don't end up there and Broomhilda's not there. Listen, I will go myself if you are scared. I don't want you to be frightened. I need to go and rescue Broomhilda. I would love for you all to come along. But if if Zara says it... was it, my grandfather. I'm remembering now. My grandfather. Okay, well, whoever it was... Oh, and you should know, um, I... Uh, um, I kind of spied on you through your eyes using my special thing I can do. So don't be mad at me. I didn't oh, no. see oh, anything. I know. 
That's fine. I know. Wait, I know. Talking to me? I know what? that you know. I was talking to you, Aldrin. Oh. Well, what did uh, you see? I know that you know, Mom. Okay. Winona, it's great to have you back as well. I mean, that's yeah, fine. there's a lot of water. Obviously, we, we needed to figure out how to get back to each other. Um, what did you see? Uh, um, you were, f- you were flying. That's odd. Oh, oh, oh! I know what you saw. Okay, that was when. Where were you? Where were you? Uh, Guar and I ended up on. Um, it's called Fara Fara, something like that. It's where Farrah. a bunch of a bunch of um. Aracocra live, like, bird people. I don't know how we ended up there. And she wouldn't let me talk to them. And we got kicked out. We didn't get kicked out? That is not what happened. But that's okay. another story. They said we would think, they would think about helping us, but it didn't seem Did you want to just promising. sit there, Guar? Sit there and wait for them to think? Is, is that what we should have pulled up some benches and just sat and like this? No, and of just course been, like, not. There weren't even any benches out there. That's why I said pull them up, Guar. I know there were benches there. Thousands of feet to the surface? At this point, Noros is just looking at Welber like... Welcome back. Uh, I would say uh, uh, Guar catches that out of the corner of his eye. Like, uh, Noros, I'm sorry. I I'm, I feel like I'm stealing all the time away from, from, from you, and you haven't seen your wife in a very long time and only to have her come back and drag you into something where you almost get murdered and I, I, I just don't I, I feel bad. I'm gonna back up and uh what? You almost no, got this murdered. This is important. This is important. What do you we, mean you almost got friends... murdered? Oh well your mother sometimes doesn't communicate very well and didn't tell the people that she was with that we were coming to get her and they tried Wait, who to were defend you with? her. And protect her, and it led into fighting. And she wouldn't even let me go well, with hold her. Either. Hold on. Well, hold on. well, I mean, okay. So some of that's true. Uh, there's. Uh, so I was with some some very nice people who found me uh, uh, on a on a beach. They they call it a beach, and like there was uh, like little tiny, tiny, tiny white pebbles, like super super small. Uh, and then I was in the house, and uh, there was a uh, there was someone that kind of like look. I guess they kind of they kind of look like Riley. They had like a like red hair, and uh, but they had horns. yes, uh, that's the sa- satyr we met. Guar apparently she yeah. can be very beautiful. I mean, when we met her, she was very old, but Brutelli? Yes, yes, yes. That's her name. Oh. Speaking of, okay, I have another story, but go ahead. So, who were these people, though? Uh, well, they were... They are kind of like you guys, I guess. They just seemed like kind of like... I don't think little... anyone's like us, I mean. Honestly, <laughs> too, Okay, I all mean... right. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, fa- I thought that <laughs> Wilbur was asking me to tell a story. <laughs> so. They're people uh, that yeah. are... That go to a school that is owned, or at least somehow funded by Grinchelli Mortimer. They seem okay, though. They what? seem okay. It's not their fault. Yeah, that's something I need to talk to you all about. Although, now that I'm thinking about it, I look at Norris and I said, we only learned three of their names, the the three students. The other the other three didn't introduce themselves at all. I don't even know it's the name of the person. I mean, they they did in a manner of speaking, but yeah. Yeah, did I don't they? know their names. The, the person that I'm supposed did to they? reach out to uh, hurt you? They didn't, yes, they, didn't they hurt them. Oh yeah, they they hurt me and Norris very badly. Yes, uh, and Norris if I ever see them, it's on sight. Norris takes this moment to go. Oh, okay. Uh, he goes. Uh, there was some. There was some speculation on, uh, and there was. It started out with a misunderstanding, as far as I understood, because uh, someone just walked in on, on their I'm... side, according to them. According to them, I not so. I knocked and so, I opened the door very slowly. So you, you went to rescue my mother and they tried to murder you? They thought uh, they thought because of the whole um, wombats are wanted that we might be there to forcibly take Winona. Um, because again, and this isn't a, a diss, or not, a, oh, she wouldn't say diss, this isn't a 
this isn't trying to throw you. Nope. She wouldn't say throw you under the bus. I can't say anything. Um, yeah. Nell doesn't know what a friggin' bus is. You know what I mean? So yeah, she says to Winona, all I'm saying is that you need, maybe if you had communicated a little bit more, you knew we were coming. Yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know when. And uh, to be honest, okay. So in my defense, there was a lot that was going on in the intersect. They have their own things that were going on, and I was trying my best to kind of help out and just, you know, be kind of just a, an older uh, uh, mentor to these uh, to these uh, to these folks because they look like they're dealing with a lot of problems, and I didn't want to. I didn't want to be an extra problem to them, so I let them put a sack over my head and. Uh, what? And they put a sack over your head. Some friends. And they go to a school that is owned by Grinchelli Mort. So, this all sounds bad, I will say. But I, I Norris and I, as the people that met them, it was a big misunderstanding. I still um, really wish you would have let me go with you. I'm having a heart well, attack. It just, it, just, it was supposed to be five minutes in and out, to be honest. And if um, I was there, it would have been. Well, that's just... We were fine. Norris and I had it under control. We're here, I, aren't we? Uh, what yep, did you do? Yep, you we had it under control. So am I just wanted by all of Imea? Is that like... Yeah, that's another thing. Um, we probably need a disguise or something for you. <laughs> uh, if we go back on land. Which, a uh, sack worked really well for me. No, oh we're not doing God. a sack. Um, I've seen actually... This might work with Guar, um, because, you know, I've seen, like, on land, sometimes there are... God damn it! There are... Sometimes... <laughs> my light went off. Sometimes there are there are people that... California have this, problems. Have this Persona. thing where they, Yeah. Have this thing where they wrap uh, uh, their child to their body with some, like, fabric. Maybe we can, like... Like, Guar can wrap you to his body like a child and just pretend you're his or something like that while we're walking around. I accept. In, on land. I could also strap you to my back. I think there's got to be a better solution. Oh, no, I don't think there is. <laughs> I'm just saying, I mean, at least you can rest and relax while... That, I mean, the children that I see in these weird get-ups, they seem very happy. Ooh, and you know what would be really cool is like if we engage in some sort of combat, you know, that we would surprise attack, you know, just leap out of the the, the swaddle and, and, and eviscerate. Oh, is everyone. that what it's called? A swaddle? Yes. No. No. I'll find it. Go ahead, it's a I know it. it's a baby Bjorn. Bjorn, yeah. that's right. That's what I want to say. But the swaddle, uh, like the the wrapping is the swaddle, mm -hmm. but the, the carrier is like a baby Bjorn or whatever. Yeah, it's like yeah. a Bjorn. A what? It's called a Bjorn. It's it's a Bjorn? Is that what you yeah. said? Yes, I mean the children I in it, the children in Anoria are just much stronger. We don't need to be strapped to their parents like that. So we don't have anything like that here to compare it to. It's a, yeah oh, okay all right okay it's called a, it's called a Bjorn. I was very confused when I first found out about it because there was a dragon in it and they said oh it's a they're a dragonborn but they were a baby and they were in a Bjorn. So I was very confused when they said it's a dragonborn and a Bjorn. And I said okay so it's a dragon Bjorn. And they did like that. I think that's why not. Very that was clever. brilliant. Yes. I thank you. I found that very amusing. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted you to know. Anyway, I think we're 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 getting off track. So there's three different things we're talking about: Cerulius, the Shadowfell, and Broomhilda, and uh, our time in Celeste meeting this group of people who um overall they they they're okay they seem nice in their own way they put a bag over my mother's head and they go to that a is school true. that's owned that by Grinchelli Mortimer that was, Mortimer. That was and they try to murder you not, it's not just my head it was just all of me if it makes you feel any better I did almost kill one of them that doesn't make me feel better. I thought they were fine. I thought there was just, it was just a misunderstanding, I think. And, she on, put a uh, knife to my throat the moment I entered the room. <sighs> Who? I will kill her. I don't I know her name. She didn't introduce right herself. <clears throat> I know, I think Alistair, uh, Gwen Bodeath, and Io are the students. 
the other three, there was a little boy child uh, with red hair. Um, and then there was, um, there was that guy, Norris, what did he look like? The one that almost killed you? Um, oh, sure. Let him relive that trauma. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, on, he Eldred. was, I don't know, he looked kind of human. He just was wearing a cloak the whole time. Okay. Thank and then there was a head over his head. Yeah, and then there was the the human woman who whose daughter is missing, who I'm, he I am promised out. Him. I don't know. I didn't see Okay. Her, so. Yeah. Um. <sighs> wait till I see these people. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Winona would... Well, Nona totally knows the names of the people. I know. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. So that, so that, so the little boy is Yori. He's a sweet boy, really. Nice. Oh, He's speaking of that, I take out of my, I take out of like a bag or something. I say he gave this to me for you. Um, he said that I could read it to you, but that just feels uncomfortable for me. So I'm going to give it to Wilbur, and Wilbur Sorry. can read it to you at some point. And there's like a gift in it too. I didn't open it. It's not my business. So you're saying it's your There's another button. bag to put over her head? Possibly, I don't know. I don't know. I don't. Wait, know so, so I'm confused. Is, is it Can your you bag it or it? your button? Is it both? What? What button? A button. Uh, a po- poem, I meant. Sorry, I, I'm very confused. You said it was your, and I didn't. You said your, uh, saying your. I what? think she said his name is Yuri. Yeah, your oh, what? Yuri. No, Yuri, Yuri is the name. Like Yuri. Yuri. What's a re? Quark. Your re. You need to just stop talking. <laughs> you did. Your re, anyways. Your re. And the other one. I don't know. Sometimes people. I Actually, I'm going to roll for this. Let's just see uh, how much Winona picked up on. Okay. Yeah, cool. Uh, so, I don't know. The, the other one that you talked to that had like kind of the knife to your throat thing, uh, mm-hmm. some, like, like she introduced herself as Kara to everybody. Okay. Uh, but I definitely heard some people call her Shabbat. Oh. Interesting. Hmm. So. What yeah, would she have like introduced she's herself the one that needs to, to have a shiv on her. <sighs> what would she have introduced herself? I don't, I assume... I assume Kara? I don't know. Well, clearly, she must be trouble. Um, I, th- I mean, I, I, do, I think that I do, a, I think it was a misunderstanding. I think it was something, to be honest, I don't, I did not know about the bag over Winona's head. If I had, I would have brought that up. Um, but it seemed like, at least from my perspective, that they were trying to protect Winona and their own very poor way. But you know what? We're probably never going to see or talk to them again. Uh, listen, I, I, we've been stuck here for so long, and I just want to find... I want to find Saren, and I want to find Milo, and I want to go kill something. Yeah, where are Saren and Milo? This is where I probably failed a little bit. I don't know, because I'm scared that they might be dead. So I haven't checked in on them. I tried checking in on you and you didn't answer. And there was a, a good, you know, half a day where I did think you were dead. So I didn't want to also learn that Saren and Milo were. So if one of you would like to use my bracelet and reach out to either of them, feel free. <laughs> and I pass my bracelet to I'll, either of them. I'll do it. Uh, do you give the letter to, uh, Winona? Yeah. Okay, cool. I give the package in the letter. You got it. I know I have the information, but I just feel like Eldrin would be like, this is uncomfortable, I'm not reading this to you. Okay. Oh, did you open it? No. Okay. Lorian did. <laughs> gotcha. Lorian read it. Uh, we'll start with just the letter because I'm not really sure what the package was. I don't, I don't see that. Uh, I think it was a package. I think there was there was something in it. That's oh, right. We'll start with the letter and we'll find out if uh, oh. it says. Um, you guys, I for- almost forgot to tell you. I know Broomhilda's mom's name. Oh, what is it? What is it? Are you ready? Yes. It, it's Brew. Oh, that's it. That's it. Oh, that's it. Okay. Okay. 
So they just Apparently. added some more like, letters in, in, to Broomhilda's name to make her name? It just, okay. Well, yeah, I mean, it's an honor to be named after a relative or an ancestor. But True. But we know her name now, so maybe we can find out some more information about her. I, I think that might true. be a good I idea. I mean, true. Yes, yes, that's true. Uh, so, um, and then just for the sake of time, I explained to Wilbur what the Shadowfell is, what we know so far. Uh, so it's the place between worlds, uh, magic works differently there, uh, we think Brimhilda is stuck there as after she fell out of, uh, Celestia. Celestia. When he says we think, I, I mutter under my breath, again, not a good enough reason to just- Zarus know. knows! I trust Zarus, he's the smartest person I've ever met. Well, he did on get land me back or sea. Okay. Uh, okay, so she is in Shadowfell, but where are Saren and Milo? I don't know. Can I use? We your don't bracelet? know where they are. Yeah, here I've, I've tried to pass it to you, but then you got on your your tangent about other things. Uh, oh no! You, you, look, pass- you know geometry now. Great. Okay. You um, pass it to to Guar, and it's enough of a movement for the camera to pass over. Uh, we're known as face who is full on it's we're underwater but full on just full weeping um uh like just straight up like looking at this letter uh which is also by the way like it was made above like it was made yeah. on land so it's actually starting to like yeah because i put it like, in it's, like it's some totally like law yeah. like soggy and like <laughs> eldrin goes what did I you say it! to make you cry what was he mean know. to you? Are you okay? What I happened? Go fix it. I am like, so sick of people being mean to you the took people it I care out. about. Fix you took it. it. You took it out of the waterproof case that I gave you. Why? You told me. You, you said I could read it. I didn't know you would try. You don't have. You, you're blind. I, d- put, it, put it back in here. Put and it I back will- in. I'll ask Azaris to mend it. Or it's something. okay. I'm sorry. Don't be upset. What did he say to you? So I want to go home. Oh, I think we all do. I'm right there with you, Winona. Really. Uh. I mean, I am home. But our home, but our home is okay. Our home is not there anymore. Winona, we don't. I'm okay. We don't know that. I'm okay. Get okay. I'm fine. Go ahead. Winona, I promise you, after we find Saren and Milo and Brumhilda, we can we can forge a, a, a new path and hopefully we can find a new home for all of us. Oh, well, I mean, home isn't there anymore. I'm not doing that. Oh, I mean, are you going to go with I, the other people? I don't, to put a, a sack over you? I'm not. I'm not. You're more than welcome here. Where her letter melted? You guys don't understand. Do you fully want to bring uh, an old wombat to Shadowfell? No, of course not. Okay. I said when <laughs> so, we all found each other, and then right. we, we, we like we regrouped, we would forge a new path toward a new home okay. somewhere. Yeah. What I, I heard was, was what I heard was when we find Saren and Milo and Broomhead. And Broom, yeah. Um, I wasn't necessarily important. You guys don't to come with us. Yeah. Gotcha. You guys don't understand to, the grove. The grove was sacred. No one knew that the grove existed. That was our space. No we one even still... knew we were there. And now we it's... still be there. Did you see mm-hmm. everything that happened? You were there. I was there. There's no way it's still there. But we can we can rebuild it. We can... I mean... It, it's gonna be okay, Wilbur. Wilbur, you're, you are right, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry to you too, Winona. That was a very special place, and, and it's, it, I, I'm sure it's been laid to waste. I'm fine. I promise what? you, though. What? <laughs> what? Guar, it wasn't. What? There's still something standing. My point is whatever damage has been done, we could find a way to bring it back to its former glory. Maybe even make it better. Is my home not there? We can make it great again? No. Ah. No. Absolutely not. <laughs> Fuck that shit. 
We'll make it. Be- we'll make it better than it was, and it was already you guys, wonderful. You guys, you guys run your own fucking campaign. I'm out of here. Um, <laughs> me too. Fuck that. I'm going to Shadowfell myself. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. Um, anywho, <laughs> there's no recovery from that. Anyway, no, there's not. So I'm gonna go will, kill myself. Well, no, no, we will restore it to its form of glory, or or make it better. We'll, we'll, either What's way. What's wrong with it? We don't know, Winona. We. We're not Why there. Why are you assuming that it's that it's not there? I Oh, it's I there. The place where the grove was is there. Why are you saying it was? Guar, stop. <sighs> well, you... You know... Reach out to Saren and Milo. That battle was bad. The tree was still standing when we were there. So that means that your home is still there. It just might need a little bit of care and rebuilding. Oh, God. Where's my dad and Wally? I don't know. While this conversation is happening, I step away and I message Milo. And I say, Milo! I was going to try to count. Milo, it's Guar from the Mongoose crew. Uh, Eldrin, Noros, and I are with Winona and Wilbur in Anoria. Where are you? Best, Guar. Uh, yeah, we'll reconvene on that in a second. Uh, I'm sorry, Evan. I'm super, super confused on what you wanted from me, man. Uh, hopefully you're watching this. Uh, okay. Um, uh, we'll say for the sake. Okay. All right. All right. We'll, so we'll do this. Uh, we'll say for this, for, for the sake of this part, we're just going to rec- I'm just going to kind of move things a little bit forward. Uh, Eldrin, you also got a note. Uh, so, uh, I don't remember how it was passed to you, but it was, uh, Yori, uh, at, at some point Yori gave you a note with this letter. Uh, let me open that up on my... Well, I could just send it to you. Okay, because I didn't think I got a note. Yeah. Um, a, uh, full disclosure, originally, uh, the assumption was that, uh, that Winona could not read. Oh, because she's blind. So that's why she gave it. Yeah, that's why you already gave it to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's not totally blind. She just cannot see very well. Um, but you're just gonna say she just can't see. She just can't see. She's not blind. She just can't see. No, she just cannot see very well. Uh, right, uh, that is the that is the note that you got. When did he have the time to write that? Uh, it was uh, originally it was on the back of this letter. Okay. Uh, okay. So we'll take this moment because we're gonna try to move this around uh, along here. Uh. Okay. Uh. So we're gonna move this along to uh. So you send that out um, uh, to Milo, and, I, and I'll be honest with you, I totally missed what you said. Uh, he just asked uh, where was... he is. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Awesome. Uh, so we're going to switch over to Milo. Um, actually, no, Milo got a six. We're going to switch over to Saren. Um, so, Saren. Did Gwar uh, message so me? <laughs> no. No, Guar messaged Milo, but I you're next. I was going to. Yeah, he was just about to. Yeah, yeah, that's why I asked. Okay. Well, if you're messaging one person, the assumption is you're going to be waiting for a response, right? That's fair. So do you want to retcon and say that you message Saren first? Sure. That would okay. make sense in the story, yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, I messaged uh, Saren. Saren! 
It's Guar from the Mongoose Crew. Hope you're well. Uh, in Anoria with Noros, Eldrin, Winona, Wilbur. Where are you? Let me know. Best, Guar. Cool. Love it. All right. So, now at this point, we're going to cut over to... Uh, uh, at this point, it is uh, it is just, uh, it's just in the midst of... Because uh, it was earlier in the day yeah i would say it's probably early afternoon right does that make right uh time wise uh something like that okay cool uh so we'll do i'm not sure if it was dark when they were supposed to be getting in the water or not no it was the next day so okay. you got that night and it was the next day right sure I'm a little You're fuzzy on the, the timeline. You, you, got, you gotta know. We gotta know. No, I rewatched it. I just. I, okay. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it was day. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it, okay. It was. That works. Make, um, guys, I need you to make track of that because there's there's just way too many things in my head to remember. Oh, um, I rewatched it and took notes. I just like couldn't wasn't sure how long I sat there and waited to get to where they stopped. So we'll again. say. So we'll say this. At the beginning of like uh at the beginning of the whole session when you were going into the water it was morning correct when the when the boat was starting to kind of get or when the boat was getting into the river when sure. do you know what time it was it was night when i got captured okay we're way past that so we'll say <laughs> it's the middle of the day um so about three o'clock um so at this point uh there is uh and i'll say we'll say for the sake of time and everything where this is actually kind of just just coming to the point where we are uh uh, uh we are sitting on the beach uh uh most likely had just pulled the um uh pulled gerard to shore gerard is still in this in this crate um uh uh, Huxley and Saren are both just kind of like laying down on the beach, just collecting their breath uh, in clearly like separate sort of areas on this, like kind of even like jagged from each other uh, feet, like facing uh, the uh, facing Gerard. Um, and uh, Saren, you get this message. What took you guys so long? I was on a mountain near Ariscar trying to get back to the grove with Huxley. Come fucking get me. <laughs> Uh, and you have to say it out loud, so we'll kind of like go to the scene of this. Clearly, Huxley could hear you. On this. Yeah, she like grabs her head a little bit and just shakes it a little bit, and then she starts saying all of that. Yeah, there. I think, uh, like at least on Huxley's side, he's just looking up at the at the sky. And just... So are they coming? Well, he didn't answer yet, but. I would hope. Good. Maybe you can go and ruin their plans. Sorry about your boat and wherever the hell you were going, but if you would have just, I don't know, not let them capture me in the first place. I told you. I was going to set you free once we got to Hasmal. And why would I want to go all the way to some place I've never heard of and risk Gerard was in a cage too? Because Huxley, we wouldn't, no, fuck. we wouldn't be 
where we are now in the goddamn wilderness. Yes, and there's a goddamn giant waiting for me fucking somewhere, wherever you took me from, that was going to get me and Gerard across that river to the grove where we're supposed to be to find the people I'm supposed to be with. What did you want me to do? I, I'm traveling with a bunch of slavers. They find a body. Turns out that person's alive and then is being protected by a this just points to Gerard. Uh, wh what am I going to say? Oh, no, guys, we should probably leave it. Use some of your fancy gadgets to, I don't know, make them think I was dead and I, it's not worth it. I just got out of jail. Sorry. What I'm gadgets? glad you what, got what out. What gadgets? No, the, the last spider gadget thing? I had. Yeah, and now that's that's at the bottom of this river somewhere. Do you want to go find it? No, I don't. I'll just make another one. Not here. Oh. And now not at Hasamal because we're not oh. going to be able to get in there now. I'm sure you'll figure it out. I can help you get there if you're not a dick the whole time. You can help me get where? To Hasamal? How are you going to help me get there? Do you even know anything about what Hasamal is? No. I'm assuming it's in North Imea. I haven't been here before. How Good would so far. I know? Yeah, you tell me how you're going to help me. All I know is the name of it. If you had a little more information than that, maybe I could figure it out. And if Guar and I'm assuming Eldrin, since he was talking to me, come and get me, maybe they would know. But I can't do anything half dead with my pet in a cage made of magic that apparently has no lock on it. Again, That's... something we could have handled if you listened to me and waited till we got to Hasamal. I don't have the key. You don't have the key. I have no idea how to open this thing. I assume you tried physically trying to open it. Obviously. <sighs> Looks at Gerard. Do you think that first guy that I took out, do you think he'd know anything? Probably. They're pretty close. Well, Why are you going to go she... ask him? I can ask him one question. And she pulls out and you see like a little pot of ink. Cool. Okay, I clearly I don't know what you're trying to do. So if you're waiting for the suspense, that's like that just I I don't She's trying to be dramatic. You talked <laughs> Yeah, yeah. He's, he's like ruining it. It was like you can't mm -hmm. all right, no, that's not I'm the one. I'm this you can't do I do that. Go ahead. Just do what you're gonna do. I really just want her to be like, I take souls now. Yeah. Oh, there's gonna be a lot of explanation here. Uh, Sarah has changed a lot since the last time. So she's just holding it in her hand. She's like, yeah, it's, um, it's technically a soul. Uh, it's, yeah, I have to take those now. I, I made a deal with a, a person, well, a being whose name I can't say because, you know, hurts my brain and sure. shit, whatever. Sure. Anyway, so how, how should I ask this slaver how to get Gerard out of a cage if you had to phrase it in you know one sentence are oh, you asking for my help yeah what? I'm asking for your help uh I mean I only know them dead so might have a little more information than me is there a password or some 
incantation to break the cage that holds the monster you picked up. Cool. And she like, I think she just smashes it. So she just like smashes it on the ground. Cool. You tell me what happens here. You tell me wow, this, how this manifests here. Um, I think it's like she she smashes it on the ground and you see like a black cloud of smoke rise up and just like a disembodied voice arises from the smoke. Cool. Uh, do you remember which one this was that you took out? I, I forget. I did not have time to go back and do my notes for Saren, so I'm not a hundred percent. I know it. I know it wasn't the one that made the cages. Yeah, that's all I remember. It that's all I remember. Right. It was whoever was okay. closest to Huxley, which is probably was also that the lizard guy. Super helpful. No, it specifically it, wasn't the lizard guy. Was the one that had it, the, the. Yeah, I remember the lizard guy was the one that did the cages. Um. Okay. Cool. Oh, Let's just say. Uh, yeah, the Maxi was there too. Um. We'll say for the sake of uh, reverence, we'll just say that it was just like a. Um. We'll just say that it was like a halfling. Um, cool. Uh, so you smash it on the ground. Uh, all of a sudden, there's a there's a second where like, uh, does that come? That's not coming through either. That's annoying. There we go. You smash it on the ground, all of a sudden, everything just around uh, Huxley, Gerard, and you just sort of gets a little darker. Uh, uh, colors seem to start to kind of pull away as if as if they're being torn from the, from the like, from sight, uh, being pulled from the center. And you see a figure just all of a sudden just kind of, you see just a singular hand come up out of the, the space of smoke that you see from the wall. Another hand comes up and, just... and you see as if being pulled up from its own, as if like coming out of its own grave, you see the figure of this, uh, this halfling uh, still very fresh. Um, so just uh, skin looking like it's just sagging a little bit uh, from the loss of blood uh, and just sallow and, and, and gaunt. Um, uh, you see the figure uh, pull itself up out of the uh, out of its space. Look over at you. Uh, yes. And she's gonna uh, just repeat exactly what Huxley said to her. To ask. It's just a singular question, right? Yeah. Cool. So yeah, you hear the phrase Sahib. Uh, so mm -hmm. at that, you see... Just... And then like the two hands kind of just come down and it'll say, uh, as you see the, as you see just the hands, you see all of a sudden just gets pulled quicker all the way down. Uh, color comes back into uh, view. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yep. Uh, Huxley, uh, who had who had quickly put on his goggles, takes him back off. I don't know either, honestly. That's the first time I've done that. That was... That was dark as shit. Yeah, so was so was like hell or I don't know, wherever I was. Yeah. 
it's been a week or month. Honestly, at this point, I'm not sure. Anyway, and she turns to Gerard's cage and says, Saib. You see just... Um, and you see Gerard kind of steps out, does a full shake. Um, okay, cool. And uh, starts to growl and makes makes a like uh, makes a low movement towards Huxley, who Huxley immediately like kind of like pulls his pulls his mechanical hand up uh, and just looks at you. And Saren just rushes towards Gerard and like throws her arms around his neck and hugs him. Okay. Uh, yeah, you see uh, Gerard uh, starts out with just like this growling sort of sentence and then just like kind of goes into a weird sort of whimper um, as uh, as uh, Huck, uh, as Gerard's head kind of just comes down into your uh, uh, into your embrace. Uh-huh. Okay. Good. Good dog cat. All right. Um, so, are they like coming to get you, or should we just try to get some, just at least get some shelter or something before it gets dark? Yeah. Um, well, my original plan was to go with a giant whose family I think we murdered. Um, but he wants to go to the grove, and he can get us across the river, so if we head back that way... Oh, I'm not heading back that way. (laughs) Forward. Are you going to swim across the river, Huxley? You know, the thing you told me you don't know how to do? Yeah, can we keep that... Just... Who's gonna hear me? The poison bird I touched? I'm just saying, you have a tendency to just have things happen all around you. I don't want to be in danger and have that just be spouting off. I'm going south until I find some way to be able to get across this fucking river. Fine. We can't go to Hasamal anymore. We can't. We're going, to, we're going somewhere else. I'm going somewhere else. Well, it's it's not like I have a specific place I need to be. I just need to find somewhere where my friends can come and get me from Look, this hellish forest. So fine. Your friends, Let's If your friends south. come and get you, right? Or you're coming with me, either way, they'll find you where we're at. Fine. Right? Let's go. Okay. Yeah. Uh I need you to keep him far away from me, okay? We'll see. Uh, gets up, uh, pushes himself up. Um, go ahead and give me a, uh, a perception or insight check. Actually, perception check. 23. 23. Uh, uh, Huxley is not a... Uh, Huxley's a pretty skinny guy from the get-go a pretty skinny human uh mm-hmm. not particularly very tall either um uh very much in that like sort of like uh you, you've like you've always seen him almost like completely covered head to toe in black um but uh in this case as you see him kind of get up and he's kind of like dusting himself off you can see like as he's doing that he's kind of he's pushing against his clothes enough that you get the idea that his his already thin frame is wire thin um uh it takes until this moment to kind of see that uh, very uh, kind of like what you saw from the halfling that pulls itself up. Like he's 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 underfed. Um. Uh. But um, still same sort of like weird sort of like uh like uh weird uh not really glowing yellow eyes but weird yellow eyes uh there as he's uh as he's looking around and just goes and just starts to kind of walk off in that direction. Um, cool. Uh, so, 
Uh, I'm going to say I, I'm going to switch it over to Milo in a second, but I'm going to say for Guar, you get a response. So I'm actually going to switch it back to you guys. Um, so um, for uh, for Guar and uh, everybody else in that scene, um, you get a response. Guar, you stepped out, right? I just kind of stepped away. Okay. So Guar would immediately spin around and interrupt whatever you were saying. Be like, Sarah sent me back a message! That's usually how it works. Okay. No need to be cheeky. And then I relay what, what she said. Uh, Huxley? She's with Huxley? I know, I know. It's crazy. But she said they fucking come get is her. She so sure she... It's, is she sure it's the right Huxley and not someone in disguise who's I didn't have coming to ruin to our ask. wedding? I didn't ask about that because I didn't know. I haven't responded yet because I'm about to message Milo. So we can find that out later, but she's heading toward the Grove. So that's important. Okay. She's for sure heading towards the Grove. For sure. She said to <laughs> fucking get her there. Okay. Oh, no. Um, why is she with Huxley? He's in prison. He got Allegedly. out? Allegedly. Allegedly in prison. Okay. Weird. Well, he must not be. Well, obviously, unless it's it's fake Huxley again. There's a lot of fake people going around. Yeah, I'll that's say. some other stuff I haven't told you about. There's people impersonating Zaris and my brother. My brother's gone. If you hadn't noticed, um, yeah. That's well, another. Am I, am I real? Yes. You remember when, when I asked you the question about who kidnapped you originally, and you said the Reverend. That uh, I asked yeah. you those very pointed questions to make sure it was actually you. Oh, I thought you would just you just forgot. Nope. I even told she you. Does that, forget that sometimes. That was okay. I'm glad you're here, Winona, and I know you're real too. So, uh. What should I say back to to Saren? Well, I will say, yeah, I mean, use that bracelet to respond back to Saren. I have my second one that you can also use to talk to Milo. So ask her where she's going to be and how she proposes we get her. Saren, it's Quar from Mongoose Crew. <laughs> I love that you're holding it like a Power Rangers watch. Uh -huh. like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's like, just when he's way like... too hard, like way too close to the mic. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, what? Sorry. How did you phrase it again, Lorianne? Um, I would say like. So Eldrin said specifically, "How do you propose we get to you? How do you propose we get to you? And when will you be there?" What else? Um, I'm amazing. actually saying I'm actually gonna covering it. Like, what else? Yeah, that, that's that's it, Guar. And you're still using it. She can hear you. No, she can't. I have my hand over it. <laughs> yep. Okay. Is it the real Huxley? Best Guar. <laughs> um, I'll roll it each way there. Because it fully does still work. Uh, yeah. Okay. I will say. I will say. You do get. Is it the real Huxley? We'll say. Okay. I didn't count, but yeah. Not the best Guar. Um, okay. Why don't we sign yeah. off? All right. Not the best Guar though. He didn't get that. <laughs> um, uh, so I won't switch it back, Saren. Uh, you can respond. It's south, down river, closest to Ariscar. Not sure. Use magic or something. Message me in a day and I'll see if I know where. And then it cuts off. I'm at. I mean, that works. Do you relay that? 
You're muted. Can't, you're muted. I just yell, "Where what?" And then I, yeah, and then I, and then I would like <laughs> give, take, like take take a beat, and then and then relay the information to everyone. When you say Erisgar, I look at Noros, uh, and then I look back at you guys and say, "Well, that's convenient. Erisgar is where we need to go at some point as well, but it can wait until after the shadow fell. Broomhild is more important." Uh, I just want to make sure the DM. I might have missed something. Saren, did you say you're going to Ariscar? What did you say? I said headed so- south down the river closest to Ariscar. No, yeah. you're nowhere near Ariscar. Uh, Ariscar, no? so on the map, if you guys see here, the Ariscar well, is... Wasn't she just there like a day ago? Yeah, yeah. but she was on a giant. Um, oh. Yeah, so well, Ariscar is on the is on the, uh, is on the south... Sorry, southeast... Uh, you are very much closer to the southwest. Um, well, she might not know that. I, I think it was. I think it was kind of established, like because you okay. you you went past. Uh, uh, you actually, I believe, there was the. F- Did you get past the first river? I don't think so. No, I don't think you did either. Okay, so you are actually Can- I'll say you're you're closer to Celeste than you are to Dare's Wharf, but Celeste mm-hmm. so Celeste would be the only one that you actually see there. Um I know it's not very big here, but uh if you guys look on the uh, Yeah, that that's the, the river uh, we're we're going down, correct? That's Yes. The- yeah. So, so you the want river a on the- Yeah, can I say Huxley big tells ri- you Celeste or <laughs> Yeah. I don't know. Did Huxley tell me anything yet? I would actually say, yeah. So think about that because I, I actually thought you got past the first one. So I think I thought you were a little bit further in. Um, okay. Uh, so yeah, Huxley would say we're going to Celeste because then we're going to go to Celeste to Dare's Wharf. That's his. That's his. That's okay. Process. Cool. She definitely said headed south down the river closest to Celeste, like and on the way to Celeste. That's yeah. when you're actually goes, not that far from Celeste. Actually, are you kidding me? <laughs> He's going to. <laughs> We were there literally four hours ago. That's where Renona was. That group. That's where that group was. Oh, good. We know where they are. Absolutely. You know what's even funnier? I'm sorry. I was going to say straight up. I, I, this is ruining immersion, but they're also not there anymore. Yeah. Okay. And <laughs> I, I just say, you're, you're, this is a, a cosmic joke, right? That wh- We're going to learn that Milo is what, like, at, Erisgar or whatever that place is that we need to go to. This is great. I feel like the gods are just laughing at us right now. You know, for all we know, Milo is having ah. the time of his life right now. Milo's what? Having the time of his life right now. You know what? You're right. Let me let me check in on Milo. I already sent him a message. You did? Yeah. Oh, I, I let me let me send him one real quick. Well, you only have one let, more left. Let Elder that... do it. Let Elder do it. I yeah, want to hear Elder do more... it. You only have one more left on that bracelet. I need to do what you want. I, what am I doing? Well, I just really, I wanted to retcon the other message that I sent because I just like that I'm yelling, hey, it's Guar from Mongoose Crew. But anyway. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. And I said, fine, do it. Milo, I hope you're alive. I'm sorry this took a while. Where are you? <laughs> That's it. You could say so many more things. You don't need to. If It's... You can end the spell early. But is that... That's not fun. This isn't a fun thing. He could be dead. He's not dead. I'm telling you, he's having the time of his life. I guarantee it. Um, I think uh, with this... Cause I realize I, I kind of did this a little bit wrong. I think I think we, we give like a second kind of coming back and we'll say that's still you and then we get a full time with both of them. So, uh, so we'll say, Milo, you are on your side... Uh, you are in, uh, I would say pretty much like pretty much right when you kind of like walked out of that situation and just started walking in whatever direction you were. I think most likely following was, the cabbage, if I recall. Yeah. Like following yeah, the direction was. the cabbage is in because cabbage is long gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So say you, you get about five steps in when you hear that. I mean, it took, took you all, took you all long enough. Uh, Milo says, I am n- not sure where I am. I know I'm north. But I'm okay. 
Uh, you do know you're north of the grove, if you wanted to say that. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I know I'm... Sure, Milo say, I, I know I'm north of the grove, uh, but I'm okay. Eldrin uses a second charge and says, Not to get sentimental, but I was afraid you were dead, so I didn't want to find out. Can you be more specific? Is like, is there a, I'm... a landmark or or something? Uh, I'm in uh, a tree city. Check, Milo. Yeah, there you go. Check. <laughs> nah, not gonna help. Oh What'd you get? It? Uh, you get? I, it was a natural two. Natural two. Okay, cool. uh, so I think it's a lot three. Of... A lot of taller trees. Yeah. Than you're used to. Well, he, he knows what it's called, right? From mm-hmm. Cabbage. He says Milo the family. knows what it's called. Uh, yeah, family. The family. The, the family. family. Yeah. Yeah. Is you're that what, you're, is, is you're that in a what commune. The, is that what the collective's <laughs> called, or is that what the actual, like, space is called? Both. Both? Okay. Because I thought uh, I remember. I'd say the uh, place doesn't really have a name. Okay. Oh, it was a uh, it was an eight for my perception, but it's a lot of uh, a lot of taller trees. Um. Yes. Uh, yeah. So Milo's gonna say, uh, "I'm I'm in a tree city, uh, r- really high up in the uh, off the ground. Nice people, though." Um, Eldrin looks a little defeated and says, um, and uses her last charge on this bracelet and says, um, it's not very helpful. (laughs) I don't know where to go to get you. Can you ask someone for directions? You're not going to hear anything back because Milo's just going to find somebody to find a map or something. Yep. By the time you're finding someone, you're not going to be able to respond either. Oh, really? Just, yeah, because it's an instant to, yeah. response thing. It's not like you oh, can okay. like, save it or anything. Oh, okay. If you want to respond, I mean, because I can just give But I also think that Milo would not know that, too. So that would yeah. be really funny. Yeah. No, there's no way Milo would know that. Yeah. <laughs> Eldrin <laughs> is waiting and, and waiting. I think he's, I mean, he's alive. Maybe I offended him? He doesn't know where he is. He said, he said tall trees and, uh, tall trees? Yeah, I mean, (laughs) trees are tall, right? That's kind of a. Like, what? Not baby trees? Or tall. Yeah. Oh, like tall, like T A L L. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, got it. Like, large trees so large. he seemingly is not in any danger yeah, i mean can we he's... just say large for now i can we just told that? you yeah we can just say large from now on um sorry yeah that's you're right on that one um i i yeah i i i'm at a loss with milo here he i don't know i asked him to go get directions and he just stopped responding so maybe that's what he's doing maybe he's getting directions yeah i don't know yeah. I, I could try. It worked. Uh, we got a lot of really good information from Sarah when I messaged her. Because I used all my words. Uh, once again, Noros. Uh, and Noros and Wilbur, <laughs> for for everyone as a reminder, but also I think for for the party as well, or uh, for the viewers, for the party, for everyone, Noros and Wilbur like recently had a pretty big fight. Like, not yeah, they like, don't like each other. Substantial. They don't really like each other. But at this moment, like Noros and Wilbur, kind of like are like, I think uh, bonding a little bit at like the ridiculousness <laughs> here. Well, it's just going cool. back and forth like this. Guar? Why don't you? Try again, because you are so much better at everything than I am. Here, have this bracelet that is my most prized possession. Listen, listen it's not everything, just some things. It's okay. We all have our strengths. 
Uh, I also, I imagine yeah. that like tossing the bracelet is like because we're underwater, it just floats. Mm-hmm. So I just like reach out and like grab it, uh, and I, I wrap it up, and I, I I'll just like you're wearing like, just... both of my bracelets now. Right, but and I talk <laughs> into the wrong one at first, but it doesn't matter, does it? No, um, no, right. no, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. So um, I would just, I it would be the same message as before. Um, cool. It's way nicer than Eldrin's, and you actually say who it is, and yeah, <laughs> best Quar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my, my, I, I gotta do. I, I think this is just like in my perspective, my perspective of Milo. Milo, give me a wisdom saving throw. <laughs> Nat twenty. Yes. Nat twenty. <laughs> Uh, fantastic. There's, uh, there's a level of like looking around at the place that you're in and the, the overwhelming sense of peace that has, that has <laughs> recently been disrupted, uh, at its core from the ESEP encounter, um, walking back in, you're kind of like looking around. I don't know. Milo, is there a, is there a little bit of a sense that like a part of you doesn't really want to know exactly where you are? So it would take a while for them to find you. Um, no, I don't think Milo would okay. think like that. I, uh, I think that would come later when he realizes he has to leave, but right. this is more of a like problem okay. solving. Hey, you guys might come here and see that this is pretty neat. Cool. We don't I think to, with like, a nat 20, you, know, you do. Okay. With a nat 20, you would normally feel the stress of a second person asking you a question mm-hmm. as if they weren't there with the other person while they were asking that question. Like, it's it's yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Uh, like, I mean, putting it all, it is the, like, uh, the worship leader getting asked the same question multiple times mm-hmm. with different people. It's just like, Jesus, like, yeah. can you just Hey, is there a song for them. Offertory? Is there? Yeah, 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 yeah. Just, just yeah. ask them. Just ask them. Yeah. When Guar just says the, the person exact, they just asked me. Yeah. When Guar doesn't really ask a separate, like a different clarifying question that I ask, <laughs> I look at Noros and I say, are you kidding me right now? I'm so glad that you he noticed that. Even... <laughs> he asked the same exact yep. thing. I don't, but you but, know what? But I used all my words. Just keep me out of it. I don't. Keep you out? What do you? I keep oh, I'm sorry. I don't know. I'm sorry that I'm a burden. You're not a burden. What? The, oh my god. Oh my god. It wasn't to you. She was talking to me. Ah, and he leaves the room. But bye, Noros. I look at I look at Guar and I don't and I say, I told you earlier, he's been in a mood lately. <laughs> well, maybe it's because you're paying all of your attention to me. I you're just making me really angry. And so <laughs> Go see to your husband. He misses you. He just saw me. See him again. Okay, you're right. Okay. Uh, For point of reference, Milo, do you do you say anything back to Guar, who's asking you the same question? Yeah. Uh, Yeah, Milo's gonna um, uh, as he's uh, as he's walking. I'm assuming I'm picturing Milo. uh, leaving leaving Esep's room and um just kind of picking up like a pebble or or a rock or whatever he sees on the floor and just kind of fidgeting with it bouncing and uh as Gore's message comes in he throws it at the ground because it's so effing loud <laughs> yes. And Milo responds ah, 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 why are you shouting? It's, it's clipping. I just yeah. <laughs> it's, cl- it's clipping. <laughs> That's funny. Oh my god. Okay, you're in the red. Orange would be great. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> uh, and, my, uh, and Milo says, "Why are you? Why are you shouting? You're inside my head right now." Uh, Eldrin knows everything I know currently. I'm trying to find out information. Awesome. Also, uh, wait, I didn't use all my words. Yes. Also, the boy from the circus is here. <laughs> Eldrin is not in the room for this. This is perfect. 
what chaos um just a, just a, like a, a out you didn't even character. mention demoran <laughs> Right. Nope. Out of nope. out of the character, boy from the circus is here. I just love that. I love thinking that like the closer you put your mouth to the bracelet, the louder you are. Um, okay. But that fully doesn't. I'm going to say that because like, it's magic, so there's got to be a certain right. level of like, yeah, that would make sense, and that's why that doesn't make sense. Right. Of right. Course. So so there's there's a little bit of that, but I do think you clip and everything. <laughs> I do think that's like a, and that's like no one's done that before. I think mm. like there's never that's not a thing. You should be proud. If Zaris heard this, he'd be like, "My God, I have to study you." <laughs> it's, the, um, it's like the uh, that exploding head syndrome, where just you just hear the loudest sound you've ever imagined. Right. Yep. Yep. Uh, Okay, cool. So uh, we're still we're still on you guys technically. Um, so yeah, Guar, you get that information back. Uh, okay, I, I hear that. I go. <gasps> I look at I look at uh, I look at um, Wilbur because wow. Wilbur's the only one left. Uh, what? Um, remember the circus? Of course, I remember the no. circus. Yeah. Well, we save you from it. What do you mean you don't remember? Oh, yeah. Did you have a sack on you then too? I don't remember. Part of it. Don't be rude to her. I'm just asking. Anyway, okay. What the, about it? The kid that we tried to save, the kid that we tried to save that was in control of all the puppets. Like he's there. He's with Milo. He's in the same place. Why do you sound like Jerry Seinfeld right now? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. What are the uh, so that's a very, that's trees? a very, that's an interesting way for Guar to put it. But yeah, okay. Uh, there's no way that kid. I thought we left. Uh, I mean, dead? we accidentally left for dead. <laughs> we didn't mean to. We couldn't. We couldn't take him. We would. I know we, we didn't mean die. to. But what do you mean he's with Milo? Milo's in grave danger. Then I know he didn't. We. <laughs> We have to go find Milo immediately. <laughs> Milo told me he's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, by the way, uh, the kid that is going to murder us all. Um, oh. he's here. I, we have to help him. We need to go find Milo We need to find Milo immediately. I'm not as worried about Saren because I, I'm kind of scared of Saren, to be honest with you. But, like, I, I'm really I'm gonna, glad she's on our side. I'm going to run to the door. And just yell Eldrin as loud as I can. And I follow oh, I follow Wilbur and I yell, Noros! <laughs> so they both come back. Because I want him to feel like he's important too. <laughs> <sighs> uh, is there anything important you say to Noros? Um, Eldrin, um, well? I mean, I catch up to him and I, <laughs> I say, um, do, do you want to be alone? No. No. I'm just, I keep... I'm sorry. Do you... I keep messing up with you. It used to be a lot easier. <laughs> Our relationship. Return. I get up. Um, I guess just don't forget I'm here. That's all. That didn't I feel can... great. Okay. I know. I love you. I, I love you too. I know it's not a... I know there's more important things going on right now, so I don't... Oh, I don't you're the be... most important thing to me. Right, no, I get that. I, I understand. I'm just I There are more pressing things right now. So I'm not I'm not gonna uh, uh, there's it's fine. Let's handle the people who are in grave danger right now. Honestly. We're good. I'm okay. Good. Sorry. Just remember that I'm in the room. <clears throat> um all right, let's go back in. I can hear Guar yelling. Yeah. 
um, before we go back in, I, I, Eldrin, um, um, stops him and just hugs him. Okay. Accepts that hug. Also, while accepts that hug, uh, we have a friend that says, you have a cute dog, Wilbur. (gasps) Thanks. Thank you, the, um. She, She is cute. She is cute. Uh. Cool. All right. So coming back into the room, uh, I Eldred! think at this point, <laughs> Noros, Eldred, Noros, yes, yes, Wilbur. Uh, we, we needed, we needed like two minutes of, oh, like okay, what, what is going on? The little murder child Esep is with Milo. He's in grave danger. <laughs> Milo's in grave danger, not the boy. How is that? He told me Milo said he was fine and safe. Yeah, he didn't tell you the truth. He probably thinks he's fine and safe. Everybody's been yelling and I don't know where to poop. Wherever you want, it's okay. <laughs> There's a chamber the pot bottom. over there. Um, oh, is that what thank that is? Thank you. <laughs> it just moves out of view. Um, How does it stay in there? Doesn't everything float? <laughs> Magic. Um, Don't look at me. <laughs> did <laughs> Elder says the, 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 you're sure that the child that we that I tried to save, right? Um, yeah, it was that one we, we we tried to, but then we were gonna we were gonna get murdered for sure if we didn't get out of there. Well, I know I, we didn't. I'm going to just assume the kid's not too happy with us. Oh, we, what did he want? Did he want us to die with him? I literally held that him in my arms and tried to leave with him, and it wasn't going to work. Well, we know that, but that kid probably doesn't know that, and now that kid is. I apologize to him as I well, left the circus. I, I I don't think he cares, Eldrin. I don't, yeah, I don't think he cares. I I'm wouldn't. I'm just saying. Well, well, would you have wanted all of us to stay and die with you? Of course no. not. Well, he exactly. might have. I don't know. We wouldn't, but he might have. He is a child we, and children can be dumb. We made a diff, we made possibly the most difficult decision we've had to make as a group doing that. Yeah, I, uh, that, yeah, I made a lot of difficult decisions that day. Yeah, yeah, we also offed. Tim? What was his name? Quar. No, that wasn't it. That's not it. Uh, Darth, that's right. So we, we, we offed him and we had to get, and we had to leave that poor kid there. So you're telling me that Milo is with this child. I mean, the kid wasn't that bad. He, he, he was in charge of all the things that were, the, the, do we know if he was Joe? What if uh, if Esep was bad? Yeah, we didn't know no, just that Esep char- was bad. He was. He in charge he, of the we puppets? didn't know he was in. He wasn't in charge. Of he the was puppets. not in charge of the puppets. Oh, yeah. okay. From our perspective, he he he's a a little creepy little boy. But like, I don't know if we would think. Well, remember, that... you guys, you guys were were of the assumption going into the circus that you were facing Lahad. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, right. So so you're assuming that that is uh, that that is the that that was the mastermind behind all of that, I think. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. so then I would retcon it to say instead of like saying, oh, no, he's in trouble. I would say, like, do you remember that kid we we tried to save and then we couldn't? He's out. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm guessing he's not very happy. (laughs) And supposedly he's with Milo. Okay, well, then, I mean, maybe this is an opportunity to help this child. We wanted to, originally. Yeah, I guess this is our chance, but I don't know. If I was him, I'd be... We don't know what happened to him at the circus after we left. It may not be the same child we left there. What can he possibly do? 
That's a good point. You actually have no idea how we, dangerous Esep is. We don't no, know no. what happened to him. But we don't understand. We don't understand what he knows or I mean, what he thinks about. All I can of understand that. your fear if he got away from La Had that he must be a little bit more powerful than we thought. But I, I mean, surely about this. Surely, if we explain to him the situation, he was there. He'll understand. I'm not worried about Milo. I'm very worried about Milo. I am too. Especially because he told you that he was okay and Esep is with him. Well, maybe they came to an understanding. Uh, I doubt it. I have a very bad feeling about this. All right, well. I'd feel a lot more comfortable if we were all together. Uh, I just... Yeah, something creeps me out about that kid. I, I wanted to save him and now he somehow got out of that by himself. Would yeah, you be happier if he, we found out he was dead? No, of course not, but I mean, I don't... But you'd feel better and not as creeped out? Listen. Remember how I've led people into battle and war? Mm-hmm. It is very important that we understand any potential threats and assess for any kind of danger. And we can't do that while we're, while we're just sitting here. Okay, well, Milo needs to... You, you said Saren said to reach out to her tomorrow when yeah. she can give us a better location. Yes. Maybe we reach out to Milo uh, after dinner when we know that he's gotten the directions that we asked him to get. Maybe we need to... Milo can get a little overwhelmed sometimes. Maybe we're piling on to him a little bit too much. Listen, I don't doubt Milo's... I don't want to... him to, you know, snap like he has in the past. Listen, I, I don't I don't doubt Milo's uh, capability in, in battling and getting out of a bad situation, but I would much rather be with him. I understand that, but we don't know where he is. Unless is... you can tell me where tall trees are north of the grove. I'm sorry, giant trees, giant trees. I, I knew what you meant. I can understand the difference between our enemy and how, how high a tree is. Okay, well, you... You uh, agree you with know? Morosa? Do you know? I'm not. Okay. Okay, so plan. You said something about dinner. I just realized I, we haven't eaten in a couple days, uh, or at least one. Uh, and, and, uh, now that you mention it, um, I can I mean, Norris and I have been enjoying dinner here and meals while we've been here. We're, I just assumed you were eating in your room. What? Well, yes, I just thought that because you and I were angry at each other, you just didn't come out to eat with us. Have I not eaten? In... We are in a palace, Guar. That... God damn it! I just... <laughs> My lights went off again. Sorry. <laughs> I thought you were mad at me. God <laughs> damn it, Guar. I was going to say, Lorian, there's got to be a reason for that. Something, something it's is because I'm not moving. There's a setting. There's a setting there's a, there's a sensor, and it's not, and I'm not moving enough. Okay. Uh, um, uh, okay. We're in a palace, Guar. There's food. I understand that, but that doesn't that just go to show how 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 much we're thinking about that I haven't even fucking eaten? Do you need I me mean, to get food? I can get food. I'll come with you. No, that's fine. You guys, honestly. It's no, cool. no, we haven't caught up in a while. I'd love to. I'd love to come along, unless you don't want me to. In, that, in which case, I don't want to bother you. You stay here. I'll get food. All right, uh, Eldrin, you go with. <laughs> no, we're good. I'm gonna go get food for everybody. Okay. I'll just I'll have seaweed, please. Noted, Winona. Uh. uh Seaweed for her as well. Okay. Got it. Uh, all right. Uh, yeah. And he heads out. And I'll say with that, uh, we are going to transition to uh, to Saren and then uh, also Milo. Before we do that, we're going to take our 10-minute break. So we'll see you guys in 10 minutes.
All right. Uh, coming on back. So uh, we are switching over to... Uh, we're switching over to Saren and Huxley as you guys are uh, traveling along, uh, kind of like right on the precipice between. Um, uh, sorry, I think I was glitching out there for a second. You guys hear me? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so uh, let me know if I go out. Uh, so right in between the like precipice of uh, the beach to the woods sort of area, kind of like pulling out kind of in between um, uh, as you're traveling along. Uh, what is, what is Saren doing? Um, after they've started walking for a little bit, uh, she is going to ask Huxley. So um, I'm afraid to ask, but where's, where's Gaston? Uh, I don't know. His sensor went off uh, when I was incarcerated. So, uh, why why were you going the opposite way then? Wouldn't you want to go find him? I want to just find him. And I mean, even if I did. What am I going to find? So that's, it'll just be easier to find a place where I can just make another one, I guess. Well, that sounds a little heartless, but you do you, Huxley. Said so his sensor went out. It doesn't mean he's gone. It means you probably should have made a better sensor, but... Oh man, you are such you are the perfect traveling companion to have. Uh your your new friends just tried to kill me. Not in a great mood. Yeah, it's funny. I had almost got blown up great. on a boat you created supposedly. So, um good job with those wires, by the way. Well, uh, first off, I didn't create it, I designed it. Okay. Design uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I gave them. I well, I didn't give them anything. I, they, I, it, it's my invention, and they, and you know what? The, the reality is, is even you know, given that there's slavers, they're certainly, they're certainly easier conversationalists. I'll say that they knew when to shut so up. So they're stupid. Things I didn't understand. Yeah. Okay. Lead the way. Lead the way, Huxley. Uh, give me a perception check. <laughs> Nat 20. For I lost a... it. What did you say? Nat 20 for a total okay. of 30. All right. Uh, with a uh, with a 30, you... Um, With a 30, as you hear uh, Huxley kind of... Uh, Huxley kind of moves on ahead. Sorry, let me switch over our background here. Just realize that now. Please, no. I don't want to be underwater again. Yes. No, you're not underwater. Um, so uh, as you are traveling with Huxley, Huxley kind of just moves on a little bit ahead, just out of like... Just kind of out of earshot, just kind of like muttering to himself. And as he does so... Uh, I'll actually roll and present a check on him. Okay, cool. Um, uh, he doesn't hear it as quick as you do, but there is a rustling in the, uh, in the pretty far off bushes. I would say they're probably about maybe like 30 feet off to the left. So just the like underbrush of just, uh, uh, the trees, but you're the first one to hear it. She, um, she looks over at Gerard to see if he also, or, like she, she kind of like motions towards where she heard the sound. And he goes, you heard that too? Didn't hear anything. Yeah. Probably waterlogged in the ear. Mm hmm And uh, she motions Gerard along to catch up with Huxley and tells him, did you just, did you hear that rustling? Shut, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up.
Okay, I think we should move closer to the beach. Works for me. Not a fan of whatever's in the, these woods. Um, Saren, give me a nature check. A nat 20 again? Okay, all right. 25? Um, all right. Uh, so My with fancy a dice are good to me. 25. Uh, you... You start to notice that the, the underbrush, as you're kind of like walking away, both of you are trying to kind of like pay attention to what's going on, but um, it's this weird sort of like... Uh, so we'll say it's kind of closer to being like maybe like four or five o'clock it's, it's, so it's this weird sort of middle of the day that there's kind of an in-between point of, of huxley like occasionally putting on goggles and sometimes not um so he's kind of like he's just doing this thing where he's like doing one and the other and just kind of moving back and he's just having trouble seeing uh, he's having trouble just kind of seeing like uh uh what is out there what you see starts out with the idea that the underbrush seems to move forward towards you at least just one portion of it um you notice the like the vines and um and leaves just seem to kind of like match the beginning of your movement hmm. Huxley, i think the forest is chasing us That's very I slowly want to fucking be here i wanted to be as as quickly to hospital as possible uh yeah i is, think we should quickly get somewhere else this is admittedly outside of my wheelhouse uh there's yeah, there's no stuff kidding. in the water too i'm sure so uh, of course you're why wouldn't there girl. be well on the beach i guess um all right and you move closer to the beach. Um, I'd say uh, looking back at that same uh, sort of uh, that same spot, you see that spot move another five uh, feet out to you and then uh, seems to abruptly kind of get like rattled as if something's pulling it back. Um, and you actually see you this time you physically see another vine kind of like kind of come in, curl in slowly and wrap around the first one and seems to kind of like choke it back and pulls it back in. And she she moves close to where that stopped and like tries to just stay in the very narrow spot. Like it Okay, so you move closer sense? to it? Yeah, it's about thirty feet away from you. I would say actually forty yeah. now that you're backing up. So do you want to move closer to it and how close do you get to it? Yeah, she she gets, let's say like uh twenty feet away from it. Okay. Hoping that that is where the where it stops. Okay. Interesting. Said it, um, and she says, well, it pulled itself back in, so maybe maybe there's a spot between that and the water that nothing can doing? get to us. I don't what, know. Just, just, magic. What, I don't get, do the magic thing. I'm okay, just guessing. You're, you're moving towards the... Okay. Yeah, it right. stopped. It stopped there. Uh, as you're turning to argue with Huxley, uh, you start to see almost as if like, as if the woods have uh, teeth in a way, the jagged edges of, uh, I'd say about, uh, counting from your perception checks, about six uh, like separate areas, these vines start to kind of push forward in the way of like, like looking like teeth, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, uh, and they move forward uh, closer to you, giving you the idea that there's more of them. Yeah. Luxley, I, I don't think it wants to hear us argue, and I think we should keep moving. Yeah, but you're, it, you're, you're getting closer to it now. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, like, and you just told me there's, there's probably stuff in the water, too, and I'd rather not be under that. And you can't swim. So, Saren, Saren. go. you say something because it cut out you're muted you guys hear me 
Yeah, can. now I can. <laughs> okay. Uh, shut up and stop moving. It's weird to say that three times, sorry. Uh, okay. I need you to look down, but just with your eyes. She tries to do that. You. Yeah, you, just, uh, you look down, keeping your head completely sort of settled. Um, uh, I'll say at this point, Gerard is kind of between you and Huxley. So say you're 20 feet, Huxley's 40, Gerard's 10 in between mm -hmm. you, right? Um, you look down and you see the vines themselves have started to... It looks like it looks like they're moving past your feet, like they're trying to wrap around you. But it's moving in a weird way to do that. I'd say with your nature check, it it kind of feels like it's feeling you out. It's trying to figure you out. Uh, you see uh, Huxley put the goggles down. And then very slowly, you see, uh, he kind of, he actually puts his, puts his hand behind his coat to kind of block out the sound of the gun that's like, uh, maneuvering in, uh, or like, uh, uh, kind of transforming into the gun. Um, okay. Do you know what this thing's doing? Um doesn't seem like it wants to hurt me yet uh i feel like making it angrier would probably not be the move uh you see him look past you and eyes get a little wider he takes the goggles off okay uh i think you can turn around now and you turn around or well do you turn around yeah she she checks her feet first to see if she's wrapped up in anything. It seems like nothing's wrapped up. It seems like they've kind of like dug into the beach, just the beginning of the beach beneath you. Okay. Um, and I would say with that, as you're looking down, you actually notice that the like greenery of grass almost seems like it's actually like growing quickly in this area. Uh, okay. You turn around, however, and... I'm gonna need a separate perception check from uh, from you on this. Dirty twenty. Okay. Uh, with a dirty twenty, you see uh, you see figures kind of like looming out of the underbrush, uh, about halfling size. Um, I say figures because they seem a, just uh, mostly just in appendages. They seem to be humanoid, but with a dirty 20, you're looking and you see that they're entirely made up of vines. And actually the, the, like the structure where you would see what you assume to be kind of the head, it looks like it's just an amalgamation of bark and vines themselves. You do see, uh, you see a couple of them, uh, seem to have like eye holes. Um, and, uh, and uh, like those that don't seem to have two eyes have look like they have like a mouth that's like kind of like making a motion up and down. Um, a couple of them seem to have a uh, seem to have arms that look a little bit longer uh, than they need to be and seem to be kind of like I'd say they they look like they're they're kind of uh, the vine itself seems to be not sharpened to a point, but it looks like it's purposely pointy as if it's a weapon. Um, you see six of them currently. And they're kind of just, they're making their way towards you slowly. She just turns around and she, she puts her hands up and puts one back down and just goes, hello? Sarah, you're the nature elf here. What am I doing? Um... Don't don't shoot the trees. Uh, 
I feel um, like if this forest wanted us dead, we would be dead already. Or maybe it just hasn't decided that we're a threat yet or not. Um, well, if you shoot it, it'll know, so... Don't. Or it won't know not to... Fuck, okay, fine. Do you want to take on a bunch of tree people? I want to not be in danger of a bunch of tree people while we're moving to Celeste. And shut up. Uh, as you're talking behind them, you see something else uh, that looks like at first that it was like a, uh, uh, there was like a, a purple coloration uh, that looked like it was most likely like some sort of like, uh, uh, some of the some of the trees that you've seen here have these like overarching like uh, overarching branches that have these very long, uh, like uh, very long, large leaves uh, of like different colors, like like in a tropical plant sort of way. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, uh, uh, at this point, you see two of the two of the leaves kind of like shuffle, and you see a head of something kind of pop out from under the brush. Uh, the head itself looks like it's like the the end of like a uh, like a tree trunk, but it's jutting outward and has uh, like this 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 sort of long flat surface on the top. And you see it's it's head itself. The difference of the uh, it looks very much like these other beings, except that you see it does seem to actually have eyes of a glowing white. As the leaves kind of shake off you see the shaking go a little faster and you hear a as you see this figure get taller and taller and eventually pull away from the brushes you see it as flying in the air and it comes towards you Saren I, I don't want to take on all of them, so if starting a fight is not the move, um, just let me handle it. Okay. See. And it doesn't touch down. It just stays over you. You can hear it. The buzzing itself is... Uh, at, at Now at this point, you can't hear Huxley. It's loud enough for that. Um, unless Huxley was shouting. Um, all you can hear is this buzzing sort of sound as you see that the, the, the large wings themselves, there seems to be like under, uh, uh, uh the large leaves, excuse me, uh, are the wings and underneath that you can see that there's smaller ones that are, that are, uh, taking care of most of the movement right now. Um, mm -hmm. you see the figure kind of come towards you and you can see, uh, very sharp pointy twigs as teeth. Um, but very menacing looking as it just kind of like looks deep into you. She, she looks up at it. You're really cool. Uh, give me a D uh, roll a D 20 and I'm going to say, add your, Actually, I'm going to say, roll me a nature check. Uh, 16. 16. Okay, cool. Uh, with a 16, you see this creature seems to be inspecting you, and you're standing your ground, which feels like the right move. And I would say with a 16, you get a feeling that it is a 50-50 whether or not this thing would consider you to be a threat. Uh, is there anything you would like to do to lessen that? Uh, that's what it's trying to figure out, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, she's going to uh, take her, her scimitar off and she throws it back on the beach behind her. 
and then puts her hands up. We don't want to hurt you. We're just trying to get to the city over there. <laughs> Looks behind you. Uh, I need an animal hand and check on Gerard. So far, so good. Uh, 17. Okay. Uh, what is Gerard doing? I think um, when when Saren throws her weapon, I think he, he like looks over at it and then probably just looks up at the tree thing and sits down slightly cowering in fear okay but cool. also knows that since Saren dropped her weapon that means just stay where you're at oh I love that yeah yeah yep dropping weapon you you've taught him at the at this point that like dropping weapon means you don't yeah. engage I love that. just sit that that's her version of like sit and stay cool um all right. Uh, I'm gonna say this. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna actually make it be someone else's role. Uh, who do I want to make it be? I'm gonna make it be Miranda's role. Miranda, can you please roll me a d20 for Huxley, please? Nat twenty. <laughs> okay, guys. Jesus. Damn, right. I'm not kidding. Thank we're you, Miranda. You, we're going to start making you all roll on D&D Beyond. All right. I'm um, not kidding. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, be I believe you because I could probably just go up there and look myself. Um, uh, <laughs> we all you, need a dice cam. That's right. You do. You, we all need a dice cam. Uh, with, a, uh, with a nat 20, uh, so you don't see this, but the camera sees a Huxley uh, just kind of like... Um, he has his hand behind his back. He does, I think, um, we see from the camera footage, like he does seem to lock the hammer back. Um, mm. But then puts up the other hand as like a, we're good. We come in peace. And that seems to be enough for this thing. Um, Eldrin, what do you speak? Um, I speak Sorry. primordial. I don't know why. I was I like, said that. <laughs> like, oh, I you saying elder, but I mean, Sarah, I'm, I'll, I'll tell you. No, I okay. don't want to know. Uh, I speak celestial, elvish, and thieves can't. Okay, cool, awesome. Um, you hear something coming through which seems like a language which tells you two things um one you know you do not understand this language and two mm -hmm. uh you uh you do now understand that this creature is intelligent enough to speak um uh so you know that you can't understand it how do you respond to it you assume it cannot understand you either in that regard. Um, I, sorry, sorry we bothered you. We're us. We're we're gonna we'll, we'll go we'll go that way. Give and hey, we'll, give give them something. Give them something. Looks over at Huxley. Give them something like an offering. Um, one second. The uh. Does she still have her jars of magic? 
We didn't really specify that, but you said I mean, anything you have, of value. You have everything in your inventory. And I would say okay. it's something that would be interesting to something that is just of the woods, right? So like there's basic items you have in there that could possibly qualify. Um, she has a, a moonstone in her inventory. Okay. You have, you have like, you picked up a, like a, like a pack when you started, like from the beginning, like you started with like a bunch of, uh, here, I'll pull up your uh, sheet here. Am I missing something? Cole, please. Yeah, like in your inventory, okay. there should be things like like rations, um, like things like that. Okay. Yeah, you have arrows, bedroll, traveler clothes. You have a dulcimer. I was trying to I was trying to think kit. of something that might be interesting to a tree. Tinder box, <laughs> torch, water skin, right? Like hemp and rope, yeah. you know, like things like don't that. Don't give right? them a tinderbox. They're a tree. Maybe not the torch. Yeah. 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 I don't want to set them on fire. They'd certainly be interested in whatever you're. I mean. You do whatever you're gonna do. I I think the moonstone is cool because it's a it's a small little rock thing. It's a little shiny rock. Cool. All right. Okay. Uh, as you slowly bend down to pick it up, you see actually as you bend down to like your pack that you probably tried to put on the ground to be like you know on that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, you see the bag itself actually maneuvers closer up to you, uh, as the vines underneath it has pushed it up for you to be like be easier to kind of get to. Mm -hmm. and uh, go ahead and tell me exactly what this moonstone looks like as you take it out so it's um it's a translucent gemstone and it it glows it has like a little blue glow around it and so it's it's got a it's got a little magic in there maybe and uh okay. it's about i'd say it's about the size of her palm and she just pulls it out and she she holds it up and mm -hmm. kind of nods towards it for you you see a long hand with fingers that are just way too long they're just all wooden you know cracking in place picks it up looks at it looks over at you just nods places it on its very large plate like head And then quickly moves back into the forest. Uh, I'll have as, you guys. As... Go ahead. I have to let you guys know that I've had this in my dice box since the very first session. So nice. I guess now I have to mail it to Joe or something. <laughs> it's not. It's the trees now. It's the trees now. <laughs> it's in the trees. It's um, in the trees. That's all right. We'll build a whole other campaign out of that uh, after. So, uh, no. Uh, yeah. I just... you... So as that happens, you see the vines start to kind of like pull away. You see the um, the like figures that have like the like their shoulders look to be like kind of made of these like kind of like shredded sort of bark. So it looks starts to kind of like come down and then starts to kind of take steps backwards. Um, everything starts to kind of shrink away. Um, and after about, uh, it takes a little bit. So I would say after about a solid 20 seconds of this whole sort of thing where the beach kind of comes back into uh, where it was before. Oxy goes. Okay. Uh, I think we're good, right? Um, well, I'm hoping. Uh, probably, yeah. Yeah, we're good. And okay. she goes over right. and picks up her scimitar, puts back. Uh, you're welcome. Thank you. Walks off. The idea. Uh, cool. Uh, please give me. Uh, roll me a D ten. Um, Joe, I have a question. Go for it. Is um Saren and Huxley? I I just thought of this because I don't think we ever established where it was. Are they anywhere near the um? the checkpoint or whatever it is to get into Anoria where the um like on land there's like the trading place or whatever or like 
that I wrote about. Um, I it's imagined. Like a... uh, here, I'll I'll pull that up. I would say, I'm like 99.9 percent .9 sure. No, but okay. uh, let me just. Like... I just figure if they were, that would be an easy. <laughs> thing yeah. To... <laughs> uh, let me uh, let me look at what you're talking about. Hold on. Um, it's where Raylan, um, the Minister of Commerce, is often found on land at the checkpoint for traders and travelers to enter Anoria. Okay. Yeah, in my view, so that's what you're referencing to. I fully think that was in Eisenheim. Okay. That was my perspective on that. And that was yeah, actually why, we, when we did the, the King and His Courts thing, I think that was mm -hmm. why I was like, that's okay. where that I just wanted to, I wanted to double check. Yeah. Um, cool. Uh, like, yeah, I mean, for the record, like, and it should be, it should be, uh, clear now coming back from Farah, uh, uh, Anorians don't spend uh, the amount, the little amount of time they actually spend with Imaeans, they spend even less time in North Imaea. Right? Yeah, so because uh, for for various reasons, uh, exploration, I don't think is a is a main source of uh, interest to Tritons. Yeah, at least on land, you know. Um, yeah, so uh, cool. Uh, what, what do we get on that D10? Nine. Nine? Okay, cool. Pretty good. Uh, sweet. So with a nine, you guys travel uh, well into the evening. Um, actually, there's a certain point, I think, Saren, where you're uh, you're traveling pretty far outside your comfort zone on like how close it is to the evening. Um, uh, at this point, like looking over at uh, um, uh, looking over at Huxley, Huxley fully has the goggles down. Seems to be totally fine. No issues at all. Um, and obviously you have dark vision, but there's mm -hmm. something about the level of like, you get the feeling there's something about those goggles. Mm -hmm. um, that's more than just like dark vision goggles. Um, so, uh, so you see, I think at this point it kind of looks like problem. It's a little, a little dark, which not used to that being an issue, but. Oh, yeah, okay. Got an extra pair of those laying around anywhere? Maybe if I didn't get imprisoned. If we didn't get attacked by guards and transported to the fucking ocean. Sorry, none of us are doing well right now. I'm glad yeah. you got out, by the way. Feel free to share how that happened or not. I, at this point, I'm too tired to care. Where have you been the past couple of days? Have you been like okay. in like civilized society anywhere? Well, I was on top of a mountain with a hill giant. Okay, so is I that got a no. Yeah, that's that's gonna be a no. That I, I got transported there by, I'm assuming, tall. So, yeah, no, not, not uh, quite. You know when you... You wish for something and you finally get to see it and realize that it's... Maybe not exactly what you wanted in the first place. I guess. I didn't... I didn't escape the jailhouse. There is no jailhouse anymore. It's chaos in the capital right now. I barely got out. Did you... or something else did I Do you... destroy the jailhouse no yeah no so what the did... voice it destroyed the jailhouse it's been anarchy in Eisenheim since we've heard that I mean, as far as I could, I got out of there as soon as I could, but it seemed like no one had their shit together and people were just 
eating each other. Well, don't want to go back there anytime soon. Be prepared. I don't know. I don't know if Celeste heard it, but if they did, we might need to keep our weapons close by. Great. Well, we'll do what we have to do. I wanted revolution. I, I didn't. But I didn't want this. This is bad. Yeah. I was going um, to house them all because I knew that at least they had high walls and maybe they didn't hear anything. I don't think walls are something that would have kept it out. I mean... I know. I just they're they're a little for, more forceful with their citizens, so if anyone well, can keep anyone in line, it'd be them. Maybe after we get to Celeste you can figure out how to get back on course and go to your great little town with rules and walls and what I don't course? Know. What course, Sarah? I'm just trying to survive. Aren't Maybe. we all? Exactly. Yeah, I'm trying can... to stop what created this chaos. My friends are trying to stop what created this chaos. I don't know. Maybe we can do it. Maybe we can't. But it's the best chance we all have. No. If you want to be a part of that, if you want your life to mean something, not just go pull up some city somewhere you've never been to. Your decision. Uh, roll me a precision check. Fifteen. We're almost there, but yeah, we can camp down now if you want. Yeah, we should probably and, rest uh, up. He goes he goes to walk like into the woods, takes like three steps and goes. I'm, can I just assume that I can walk here now? Yeah, I mean, they seemed pretty okay with our presence oh. uh give me a perception check sir uh 30 20 30 20 a dirty 20 looking around and it's very dark in here and you have dark vision right but it's mm -hmm. it's dark out you can see the like your your dim light sort of vision only goes so far but looking all around in the trees, you don't see anything until you see the faint glow of a moonstone. Maybe a hundred feet away, off in the distance. Well, I I don't think we should go too far, but I it, I don't think it'll hurt to camp right here at the edge of the forest. They're watching okay. us. Do you motion to where? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. That's not that's not creepy at all. All right. Um well I'll get firewood. Right? That's that's okay, right? I mean they're made of wood, so burning firewood seems Okay. Not the best. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, they're right, trees. No, don't burn the trees. Or shoot the trees. Yeah. 
don't burn or shoot the trees. Got it. Okay. And he <laughs> truly laughs at that. Uh, all right. I guess I will just. I just takes out his bedroll and just. Good night. Good night. Lays down. And with that, we're going to switch over to Milo. Cool. That was fun. Milo! Um, you are walking along uh, on the uh, on the path hearing the uh, 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 every once in a while as the uh, as the the bridge has various forms of being fully solid uh, and then occasionally being like rope bridge uh, as you're kind of like walking along. Uh, uh, are you trying to head to any direction? Where, where are you trying to get to? Um, yeah, Milo's gonna, uh, Milo's kind of, kind of started walking off in the direction, uh, Kavish left for, um, mm -hmm. see if, see if he can find any friendly faces or anything that looks like, a or any, yeah, either a friendly face or somewhere that looks official, whichever pops up first. Okay, you got it. Uh, go ahead and give me... Uh, I'll say first, give me a survival check with disadvantage. Well, shit. That was 11. 11, cool. Uh, with an 11, you uh, you pass by the first, like, sort of why uh, in the, like, separation there, and you're, you're kind of, like, looking around, looking at the ground. And I think there's a part of Milo where, like, Milo's extremely lucky uh, in a lot of in a lot of cases, and I think some of that kind of maybe goes to your head of like, all right, he went this way, and just like you cho chose a way, yeah. and you've been walking for about a good solid five minutes, so you realize he's definitely not coming this way. <laughs> um, uh, and I'll say, okay, now give me a perception check. Uh, net one, three, seven. Don't you have halfling awesome. luck? Mm. Oh, yeah. I am lucky. You're right. Uh, that was a 10 for 17. Okay. Um, with a 17, uh, you see... Uh, you What you hear, actually, first is laughter. Mm. Um, you... Uh, You follow the sound of laughter, and um, it's a mixture of like mostly sounds lighter, like it's uh, like children or uh, yeah. you know, uh, or, or possibly female, it's hard to tell, but it sounds like a crowd as you get closer. Yeah. Um, does that uh dissuade you from coming closer, or do you think you continue? No, I think. Uh, Milo's gonna kind of safety in numbers. He's gonna feel com more comfortable. Okay. Uh, awesome. Uh, you, uh, as you kind of turn to the, like, you're kind of like coming around a tree side, you see that the tree itself actually has been cut uh, almost in half. Uh, and you see that the, the wood itself has been, uh, uh, has like uh, been healed over. Uh, as if it's like it's kind of its own sort of tree again very similar to what you saw in like the cafeteria sort of thing um and you see there's a little bit of like a cut uh a cut out into it uh and you see there is a uh in the tree itself there is a uh if you were to imagine the if you were to imagine a like a god-sized saw coming into this tree it was cut kind of at an at a downward angle um, mm -hmm. so you, you notice that there's, uh, in the, in the space where it is, uh, where it's like higher up on the diagonal side, you notice that there's benches, there's several benches, um, uh, in different sort of like levels there. And you're seeing a crowd of, uh, more woodland beings for the most part, but just a lot of the same sort of, uh, uh people that you'd seen, uh, uh, some of them look a little bit odder than others, uh, 
but you see they're all laughing at something that you're not seeing from your from your perspective. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, Milo's gonna uh, can he walk pat like walk through this or walk past this without disrupting it? Uh, you could if you want. The bridge kind of keeps going. Uh, but I'll mm-hmm. say as you walk past, you could also kind of see probably what they're looking at. Okay, yeah. Yeah, Milo's going to like peek, peek in, but carry on. Cool. Uh, yeah, you see, uh, it looks like there is a uh, there is a puppet play going on. Of course there is. Um, uh, not it, I will say this. It is not like a um, it's a mixture of like uh, it's a mixture of like uh, puppets like in the like um, fully in the the mannequin sort of like like way. But they're also conversing with just um, obviously like actors that are dressed up in just like massive amounts of leaves that are sort of like supposed to be representing uh i say in this instance you you get the idea that it's like it's kind of like a kid's play um Mm -hmm. like the 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 being itself that's in the like that's in the sort of moss there actually like is obviously supposed to be um it's supposed to be something uh or it's supposed to be like a like a monster or whatever Uh, but it's all it's all fun. It's all like, you know, it, yeah. you can see that. Yeah. Um, in this moment, you see uh, the there is a uh, there is a smaller. Uh, there is a uh, uh, the design of the sizes difference kind of gives you like I'll, I'll put a mechanics level of like. If they're medium, this thing is huge, like sort of thing, <laughs> like the way that's designed there. Um, so you you. Uh, you see, uh, and it's not like cleverly designed where you actually can't see the people that are doing it. You can just fully see the uh, the uh, marionettes, right? Uh, yeah. the, the people that are controlling, you can fully see them. The puppeteers, yeah, you can fully see them kind of maneuvering uh, around and kind of like uh, uh, making motions. And you see the puppet itself uh, seems to be kind of swinging a sword at this thing. Uh, uh, you hear random clapping from people. Uh, he, yeah, so you can clearly see it's just it's a looks to be like some sort of children's play that's going on. Cute. Uh, yeah, Milo's gonna ca- uh, kind of carry on and no- note that puppets are supposed to be fun. Cool. You got it. Uh, great. Uh, so as you uh, as you start to uh, walk along, you come to another uh, another like Y, another split here, um, and you can choose to stay closer to the trees or further out into what looks to be kind of a like a, a kind of an open area in the sky, honestly, for a little bit. Uh, yeah, he's gonna go out towards the like open area. Okay, cool. Uh, as you're walking along, there is a there's a certain point that as you get to each step, you actually start to kind of feel you feel the swinging is a little bit more, uh, mm-hmm. a little a little bit larger out, and you're seeing like it's attached to ropes that are ascending up into the trees at a weird angle, at an outward angle that doesn't quite make sense, um, mm-hmm. and you feel like as you like look up as you look up too far, you notice that like it feels like it. It feels like your legs kind of get a little shakier. Um, uh, concentrating on that, you uh, actually give me a, give me a perception check. Let's say nat twenty for twenty six. Okay. Nat twenty, you're able to uh, to kind of get your bearings on this and feel like if you lean into it a little bit more, you're able to kind of mm-hmm. uh, feel like you can you can. Uh, perceive the wind taking before it's going to so you can kind of like uh, be apprehensive on that Um, and with that as you're kind of like leaning up against the side uh, ironically very much how you saw uh, uh, Kavish uh, in the beginning Um, or uh, a couple sessions ago Uh, 
uh, you see a figure coming towards you uh, with a nat 20. You see that it looks like it is a uh, it is some sort of tabaxi. Uh, you see there's uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, Lorian might know. I don't know what type of cat this is, but it's like it's the um, you see like the uh, kind of like it's gray with darker gray spots um, that are more like stripes, I would say. Like a actually. Blue Russian. Sure. That is a cat. Russian, Russian blue. I don't know. A Russian I don't know if they have stripes. Just, yeah, Russian blue is just, just gray. Is it like a, a weird Bengal? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Uh, let's see here. Let's do this. Uh, gray cat, white stripes. This is important. So everybody, hold on. Oh, white stripes. I didn't hear white. Yeah, there it is. What is that? Oh god, I gotta click a million. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Uh, it's not a main coon. Okay, there we go. I guess I guess what I was thinking of is an American short hair. I was just about to say that. Yeah, uh, it's a tabby cat. Okay. I guess it's a type type of tabby cat. Um, yeah, uh, just comes towards you. Uh, very like. Um, you see a uh, uh this figure does look a little bit different than most of the other figures you see like a lot of them have adopted some like some sort of like leaf coverings things like that um you've noticed that actually like even like uh probably some of the folks around uh uh judging from milo's heritage of being from brunte uh, everyone in brunte is probably very covered uh there's a couple of there's a couple of uh beings that are humanoid in figure that are not nearly as covered um <laughs> uh as they are very much into the like uh druidic sort of regalia um uh this figure uh uh you're uh happy to to see is actually just in a full like just a long coat um it looks like a coat that you probably have seen like on an elven individual um and you're not sure if this is like classist or racist or not but it looks like it doesn't quite fit the tabby cat to the point that it looks like he probably like like it's not his uh, or hers you're not able to tell at this point um as the figure kind of comes towards you everything okay um yeah i'm kind of new here do you know where i can find a like a map or someone someone who can help me find my bearings <laughs> yeah you are new okay um yeah uh not really a map sorry um after a little bit of um how long have you been here nine hours ten ten nine hours, hours something okay. like that. great um yeah i say give it about another 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 three or four of those um and you'll probably kind of get your bearings a little bit more uh sorry i don't have a map for you uh there's a uh you do get used to it pretty quickly i'll be honest um uh uh so you're, you're new here right so you're you're run away i, I guess i guess not, not 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 necessarily like a specific map for this place i i kind of found myself here i think um uh, is the best way to put it, and uh, like yeah. in in Imea, like where in in right. context of Imea, where where I guess where are we? How can oh. I find out where we are? Gotcha. Yeah, uh, you're in. Um, well, you're in North Imea. Um, I can tell you that. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, oh boy, it's been some time. Uh, you know where Mea is. I, I may, yeah. No, me. Sorry, it's the might be the Milo's gonna um, Milo's gonna like have a like weird look on his face and then step a little bit closer to him. Ah, uh, me. M M. I'm I'm, I'm right here. Oh? I can't. Oh, oh, mirror. No, I'm not saying um, come here. I'm saying yeah, no, <laughs> me. Oh, uh, no, I. I'm sorry. I'm from. I'm. I'm, I'm from I'm from way south. I don't I don't know this area okay. very well. Oh, okay, great. Uh, like Diaz Wolf. Uh, Brunte. Cool, cool. Um, clearly, you can tell. Uh, yeah. Doesn't recognize it at all. Uh, great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, sorry, I don't know where that is. Um, I, I apologize. I feel like I could probably be a bigger help if I haven't been here for so long. You know. 
Um, yeah. Uh, sorry, I wish I could be of more. Uh, I'm failing, by the way. Um, Milo, Milo Underdale. Ah, Phelan Nightshade. Nice, nice to meet you. Uh, the last name, don't worry about it. It's not... Uh... Oh, do we... Okay. No, no, no. You Inform said your last Informal. name, so that's why I said my last name. But Nightshade is a... is a, is a, a. It sounds like I'm trying to be somewhat, something, you know? Um, and that's ah. not... That's just a, a family name. I imagine my folks at some point... Uh, tried to seem like something that they probably weren't i guess but um no yeah i just didn't want you well, i just didn't want to get a persona read. like i'm failing night shit you know what i mean i didn't i didn't read i didn't read into it i have a. Uh, I have a uh one of my uh one of my best friends has a has a name he's not super proud of oh okay great yeah yeah i am i don't mind it it's just it's just a weird like you know it's like a, a Phoenix Dark One, you know. I just yeah, yeah. Um, yeah you yeah, don't uh, have to live uh, up to it. You could just right. kind of like be awesome. Yeah. Uh, so, do you know anyone who can? Um, anyone that could help me find my like find that information? Sure. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, so there's a couple people um, that I think could help you in that um one of which i don't think i don't think he's back yet but um uh, have you you uh have you met any well no you're new here but uh there's a there's a uh, a genasi that walks around here his name is kavish um he's the uh he's kind of like he's one of the elders uh, oh so there's elders um okay where, who brought you here or did you just did you oh, just well, find kavish oh Okay, so you definitely know who the okay, and okay. then you're asking me where. Um, okay, well, yeah, I, I lost him, and then I just kind of wandered around because it seems seems pretty pretty calm here, um, and uh, happened on you. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, right. So you so you lost him then. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty easy. Well, all right. Um, well, he might be, uh, sometimes he likes to watch, uh, the, uh, he likes to, well, honestly, he, he doesn't like to watch the plays that people are putting on. He likes to watch the people watching the plays that are being put on. Um, so, uh, I don't know if you, you, you probably That's passed, by, actually, I know you passed by that area. Um, unless you took, yeah, yeah, yeah. The little more. like amphitheater. Yeah. 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 It's pretty cool. Um, it's not, you yeah. know, it's not for me, but, uh. Yeah, because it's for kids, but that's fair. I, I'm called childish enough. I uh, yeah, I can just head back there and see if I can see if I find Cavish there. Sure. Yeah, I'm heading that way myself. Um, uh, and you head back in that direction. Um, uh, we'll see. Uh, <laughs> Milo's so... going yeah, to go um, Milo's going to reach in his bag and uh, and say, "Is this?" <sighs> Is is this weird? And he's gonna hold up. Uh, is this weird to offer you? And he's gonna hold up a ball of twine. Oh yeah, that's super offensive. Um, I'm oh I'm so sorry. And he's gonna tuck it. Uh, I just I I I don't know many. I've if no. This it's is okay. the wrong word. Tabaxi. I I don't know many tabaxi. No, that's I know definitely one. The right he word. Tried yeah. to kill me a lot. He tried to kill oh, me a lot. Shit, man. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. No, I. Uh, uh, First off, it's okay. I get it. Um, you know, I, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, the first, uh, the first halfling I, I saw that had like a, like a bald head up top. I just wanted to kind of rub it and, and I, and I, and I didn't. So there's, there's that difference with us because I, I figured that was probably not right, but I wanted to. So I get the notion to, uh, to wanting to kind of, uh, be up but yeah no it's uh it's fine well, no uh but yeah don't do that to anyone else uh well, unless well, that's there's, gracious a, of you. there's a tabaxi that's trying to like uh kill you i guess you could throw it to them maybe that'll like kind of enrage them but i don't know who's we'll trying to kill you him. like oh, a family okay. thing, um well that was that was well that was gracious um so the 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 puppets the puppet show yeah 
Oh, Sorry. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're done with this conversation. All right. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> Milo's gonna like. Milo's gonna like put his hood up a little bit more. Okay. You got it. Right. Um, so there's. I think there's like an. There's a. There's like an. Actually, there's only an awkward two seconds because then uh, mm -hmm. Phelan just goes. Listen, I'm sorry. Did I? Did I? I it was the rubbing the head thing. Um, he. I, no. Sometimes I, I put a foot in my mouth. You gave me the twine, and I was like, "Oh, that's not okay." And I was just kind of reciprocating the idea to actually make you feel more yeah. comfortable. But I can see. I no, I mean, honestly, if you want to, I mean, if you want to rub the head, it's. It, I get it. I it's truly shiny. don't. I like. But no, I, I I get what was happening. It's not a. We're good. It was a learning experience. We we but I. I definitely learned. Um, so right. thank you. Um, yeah. I'm, I, yeah. T today's lesson is about and boundaries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Um, okay. Cool. So we're good. Um, uh, if we're if we're good, we're good. Thank you. Great. All right. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, and he he kind of uh, he walks with you back to uh, where the uh, the play is. Uh, um, at this point, uh, we'll say, uh, go ahead and give me a, give me a perception check uh, to look for Cavish. Uh, it's a dirty 20. Dirty 20, cool. Um, forgot to roll to see if Cavish is there. Okay, yeah. Um, you see Cavish is indeed there. Um, he's actually kind of sitting uh, on the opposite sort of side, uh, kind of close by the stage, as if like, uh, like the only area to kind of come in and out of this amphitheater is by the sides. Um, mm -hmm. so you see him kind of just on the opposite side, almost like where you imagine, like if there was a ticket, like person, like that's where they would stand. Does that make sense? Like, that's kind of like where he's mm -hmm. at. Um, and he's just kind of like, he's just kind of like propped up against the side and he's just kind of watching. You see a quiet smile on his face. Um, he doesn't mm -hmm. see you, uh, from the area. I'd say he's probably out, you know, this is, this is pretty big. I'd say probably out, like 60 feet at least, mm -hmm. uh, distance. Okay. Uh, so Milo's going to go behind can can you go behind and what? like can can you approach like the other entrance like milo's gonna try and go in the other entrance rather than walk across oh the yeah yeah why do you see them? oh yeah yeah there he is uh yeah i can uh or do you want to i can i can we can stop here we can just, uh sorry i just again yeah, i can... feel like i i go ahead no, yeah, you can feel feel free to go on your day. I um, I acknowledge I, I made it weird. Do, I have um, nothing and to do we can... this is my day off, so I, I didn't. I didn't. I was gonna go. Uh, I I guess I was gonna go to the cafeteria. So I guess I could go do that. Um, yeah, I don't wanna. I don't wanna keep you. Um, the soup's really good today. Uh, I'm gonna. Okay. I'm gonna go find. I'm gonna go find Cabbage. Thank you. All right. Uh, yeah. Nice to meet you, Milo Underdale. Nice to meet you. I'm b bad with names. Oh, okay. Um, yep. Uh, Phelan Nightshade. Phelan Nightshade. Phelan Nightshade. Yeah, it's cool. You can just say Phelan or, you know, or we could just, we could just do the whole thing uh, later. Um, again. Bye. And you see him just turn and walk off. <laughs> Uh, uh, Milo's gonna as he's walking off. Milo's gonna just... shit. <laughs> <laughs> yep, love it. I love as a uh, DM. Then... I'm like, I'm gonna put this character in in Milo's way, and it's gonna feel like a cool, just like refreshing water. Like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> I can talk with this person, and and somehow Milo like totally <laughs> ruined it. That's so good. <laughs> Uh, he's, yeah he's met he's met exactly one tabaxi and it was an awful and it was an awful experience so right. he, he was trying to Another give a peace offering before. yeah yeah part of yeah. part of mark's group was a tabaxi oh that's oh right. yeah that's right yeah. <laughs> uh so yeah so coming along to the other side all tabaxis uh, meld together in milo's mind <laughs> They all look the same. I love the idea of getting uh. the twine. It's, it's so messed up. <laughs> uh, it's so funny. Uh, cool. 
uh all right um yeah so coming along the other side like the back entrance uh there's a certain point where as you're as you're coming uh you're about like halfway there when you start to hear like weird stamping um uh and you imagine it's all kind of like part of that like they it it happened immediately and you kind of feel like the whatever's going on like the crowd was told to do it but it like kind of jars you um mm-hmm. as you uh come along to the other sort of end of this very large tree um and you see uh See Cabbage is kind of off to the side, just looking. Oh, uh, hi. Oh, uh, hey, hey, Cabbage. Um, I'm glad I found you. Hey, can we, um, quick chat for a second? Sure. Um, yes, uh, let's do that. Uh, and he uh, he kind of like gently puts a hand on your back and kind of like uh, you guys kind of walk off a little bit uh, to an, to an area like sort of just a little bit darker as the canopy kind of like kind of shrouds out to a certain place. Uh, I'm just going to uh, I'm just going to tell you straight up. Uh, there's no good way to say this. At some point in time, those that live here have decided to. Uh, they decided that my name is Elder or Elder Cavish as a, as a title. Um, I didn't require them to do that, but uh, time has passed and here we are. So I would just say uh, in public to save your um, standing, I guess, in the just, uh, just keep that in mind. El- El- Elder, stick to Elder. Elder Cavish. I truly do not care, but just in your for your benefit. Okay, I can. Uh, I, I, I can probably remember that. Uh, and my uh, the meeting go. Um. Do you how? Hmm. So there are three South Amans here. Then I, I take it. At least, as far as I know. Um, yeah, you brought you brought me to the one I wasn't talking about. Uh, oh, okay. Um, uh, one that I have a uh, com- complicated history. Not that all South um, Imans know each other, but uh, all so. three of us happen to. Um, okay. I don't really have a great relationship with either of them uh but the, he, he, it was a little tiring uh do you know much about um either of them i i do not know the other one that you're speaking of i know isep the boy that you've found uh to have a problem with come well, on i don't necessarily have he ha- it's complicated he has uh Cavish is looking at a full grown man saying, I have a problem with this 12 year old boy. Yeah. Yeah. And Milo's, re- yeah, Milo's backpedaling that. Um, <laughs> uh, we, we, sh- we should have a, we should have a shared, um, shared enemy. Somehow some of that rage uh, got transferred onto me. Um, and, uh, uh, but neither here nor there. I, uh, um, it was just not a, not a, not a great meeting. That was, that's all. It, uh, it sounds like it's here and, and there. Uh, it, it does sound like that it's, is there something that we need to, something that we need to discuss? Uh, we can. No, no, no. I don't, I don't think it, I don't think it requires immediate action. I, something the, the children blown off steam i think more more than anything um i always knew him as being well a few days i know him he's a quiet boy okay uh then milo's gonna uh milo's gonna, well uh, more more importantly uh or as importantly i don't know i i, I keep putting um I, I keep saying the wrong things today. Uh, also, importantly, uh, where 
bless you, Cavish. Uh, Elder Thank Cavish. Uh, where... Where are we in Imea? Like, what, like if I... So, I know we came from the Grove. Um, mm -hmm. And all I know is we're north of that. Um, what, what, what's up? Sorry, Joe's looking for something. Oh, okay. Is that... Is this what I'm looking for? No, that's Tomb. Tomb. Uh, tomb. You my, you my boy, Tomb. Uh, Cavish should be in there, but he's not. Sorry. Uh, continue. Um, yeah, where, like, where, um, I guess, do you have a map? I'm, I'm trying to figure out where, like, where we are in Imea. Sure. Um, well. Looks at yours. I ask why. Honestly, because I'm the the party I'm separated from uh, is trying trying to trying to contact me trying trying to figure out where I am so we can re rejoin. Um, huh. Dishonestly, no reason. I'm just curious. Uh, well. I have to be honest with you, Milo. There's um, there's a point in time where I'm realizing that uh, my level of understanding and feeling like I know someone uh, can sometimes uh, uh, m might be a uh, an imbalance on my ego. So to counteract that, I'm going to tell you that anywhere that you need to be, I can probably bring you. But I will just be honest with you. I don't think at this time I'm going to tell you exactly where we are. More importantly, where this is. Okay. I mean, there's a... It... I don't want to pry. Is it more of a security of the family thing, or is it a I'm I'm being detained situation? Oh no 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 nothing like that. Yeah, I guess more the uh, more the former. Okay, I can. I mean, I can live with that. Um, yeah, I guess we do can. You feel, I'm sorry. Do you feel like you're being detained? No, I've been. Um, I've just kind of gotten. Uh, found myself into situations where I like don't necessarily realize I'm unsafe until I'm very unsafe. Uh, so my guard's always a little bit up. Well, I know that uh, you know me as well as I know you, but uh, uh, I was hoping that you would see this place as a we'll put it this way. For many, this is a home a place of welcome a place of feeling a place of belonging for those that don't get that elsewhere so I apologize if there's anything that uh, I did or said that made you feel anything other than the most welcome I wanted this to feel welcoming for you yeah in no way uh i i um it's been it's been a hard couple of months uh so i think the uh the hospitality was viewed as uh viewed with cynicism incorrectly uh um so i Understood. yeah i just again keep saying keep saying exactly the wrong things today i tried to give it to Baxi a ball of twine earlier i'm not oh, doing great that's on the not Yes, uh, so, so I guess learned. I could have been um, clear about that. Is there anything, uh, if someone is of a, uh, 
it's typically not a good idea to uh, say anyone who's like particularly taller than you to like say anything like uh, like how's the weather up there or anything like that um uh, and he starts to kind of go through like very <laughs> like obvious sort of things like yeah. you don't say this about this person um as this is happening you hear an odd sort of like a large sort of splash um uh below you and uh milo's gonna like react to that and what are the what are the odds that's tomb <laughs> okay uh so you're looking are you looking down no milo's asking cabbage okay. um not zero uh wasn't concerned until you said that uh and he starts to, he starts <laughs> to kind of walk uh he walks through the play uh, mm. sorry sorry i i apologize um you don't uh, actually this is a notable thing you do not hear booze from the crowd what you hear is a someone that's that like you hear applause and cheering mm. Uh, as if there was a possibility that maybe Cavish was getting like on stage to say something. Um, and you see him kind of just like put his head down and just kind of like walks past. Um, and you hear a couple of like, oh, from the, from the crowd to see if he comes this way. So this is the point of telling you like Cavish is loved here. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, goes to the end there, just kind of like looks down. Um, motions towards you uh yeah milo's gonna scamper just the way cavish came through like just you behind him just, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah as you're walking did you do anything to like uh yeah he's gonna do the like well he's okay he's gonna do the crosswalk uh like half run the where you're like half of you're, you're just, just trying to go yeah. faster than yeah. the bottom yeah, yeah, half yeah. of you yeah yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah where you're like where you're like i'm obviously trying not to be a burden here but i know that there's no way i'm going to move faster than <laughs> yes. I, uh, faster than i will yeah. yes awesome uh cool you cross paths you cross past them uh at this point at this point you get, you get about three quarters away and you audibly hear a boo at this point <laughs> like is there <laughs> there's like people like, all right so people are just interrupting yeah. our play okay got it yeah. um, so milo just like milo's gonna be like yeah, yeah like turn around to the boo and like i, I get it and just <laughs> and uh <laughs> join cavish you got it uh cavish uh uh I, I, this is a this is a little well no i want to give some time here uh so cavish uh cavish looks up to you as you kind of come up to him and he has, just has a big smile on his face you know what I said about um, feeling at home and feeling welcome. Uh, yeah. Okay. Just points it down. Uh, you see, uh, Duchess has uh, has planted themselves into the water and has uh, like tentacles, kind of like moving up and down. And it takes you a second as you see. It looks like it looks because it's very high up from your from your just like it's like you're like legitimately maybe like. I don't know, half a mile up. Like it's it's, it's really high. Um, uh, you uh, you look down. And you see. Uh, I think your initial reaction is, "Oh no!" Uh, yeah. Uh, Duchess is being attacked by a thousand little tiny things, um, or like a bunch of little tiny things. And you see that they're actually there. Seems to be uh, people on the on the ground. Uh, very small somewhat childlike that mm -hmm. are that are truly playing with duchess like running along duchess's like tentacles like coming mm -hmm. in and out and out of the, the skull of duchess like peeking out laughing uh jumping off the skull like things like that and i'd say even from the distance that you're at like duchess doesn't seem to be in any danger and mm -hmm. actually i would say this give me an animal handling check to kind of get the idea for you uh 17 17 um uh duchess looks i'll say uh you have this weird sort of like connection with duchess that you see uh you see a little bit of your of your current position with duchess 
or uh, current position here reflected in Duchess. Mm. Uh, going along with it, seemingly kind of having a good time, but being very like careful and cautious and not really sure what like it's hard to tell whether Duchess is truly happy about what's going on, but is mm -hmm. is is moving along with it. Does this seem like a natural body of water or did they dam up a stream for Duchess to have a place? Good question. Uh, these are all like all a bunch of druids made this place. It is a natural yeah. body of water. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, Milo's gonna look. Do you, do you, um, do you guys do you, do you need that little pond? Is that is she is she in the way? Nothing is truly in the way here. I do like I I do like I do like how you druids approach obstacles. As he's saying that he's looking around at the at the uneven the uneven uh, sidewalks and mm -hmm. and bridges and and how everything hugs to the the shapes of the trees or the trees hug to the shape that they need to. Yeah. Perfection in the imperfection, for sure. We like it. But it's not for everybody, I understand. Um, where would you like me to drop you off? Um, well, I, I guess if I'm setting up a rendezvous, I gotta wait for... I, I don't have a way to contact them, so I gotta wait till they contact me. Um, pretty, I'll, I'll let, I'll let you know when we, if, if, I mean, they gave me this much time, I'll let you know how long it takes to, or where, where we need to be. So, well, if it's waiting till this evening, you can find me, uh, they call it the party tree, but, um, it's just over there. What is, uh, can I see the party tree from, from where I'm at? Yeah, I'd say you see it's a giant tree, uh, up above it. It's, it's, uh, there's a, the cafeteria is above it. It's the same tree. It's uh, below that. You see, there's a, there's a large sort of, uh, cut out that, uh, in, in, on this side, you don't, it's pretty far away to be able to kind of see anything, uh, of note. Um, besides you see you see like little like it's it's very far away so you see like little formations of like people doing something there hmm. okay uh milo's gonna like peer off that in party tree huh. mm -hmm. right, well, if there's a party i uh, guess i'll see you there all right will put you on the list. And uh, uh, and with that, Milo is going to um, uh, Milo is going to start walking straight down the tree towards Duchess. Okay, uh, so you're trying to find your way down to Duchess. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Or are you saying like weird monk shit? Like you're walking. Yeah, weird monk shit. He's walking straight down the tree. Love down it. Down the trunk. Awesome. Uh, cool. Uh, you uh, you come to the to the side that you go. To, um, you actually see like have to go. Oh oh. Uh, don't. Hmm. Impressive, Mister Underdale. I'll see. see him. I'll see you later. I'll find you. You see him kind of just walk off. Uh, as you're heading down. You're walking down. You're uh, you're getting near the forest floor, but you're still actually kind of higher up at this point. I like you to roll a perception check. Oh, uh, uh, fifteen. Fifteen. Fifteen was a DC. As you start to walk down, 
you come below the general sort of canopy, you're getting closer to the forest floor, you see that in the distance, you can't help but notice off to your, off to your left, you see uh, uh, far away from the river, by the way, uh, you see there's a, a small patch of bushes that are different sort of like kind of like autumn colors uh like green red uh sorry excuse me red orange yellow um but from your perspective you're still actually high above you actually get an interesting sort of birds bird's eye view of this you see there is a big open area in the middle of that patch of uh, red foliage you can't make out for certain but it looks black <laughs> and as you're watching you see in the distance that like a little bit of wind picks up and the black area moves up and twinkles out as you notice that's what happens to ash <laughs> As you see this, you can't help, you can't help but hear in your mind. Mind the rings, Mr. Milo. <laughs> and with that, is, with uh, what uh, what direction is this uh, clearing? It's pretty far away pretty far away i'd say it's about maybe uh, about a half mile off uh from the left of uh from uh we'll say west of uh where you currently see duchess okay okay so as you notice this you make note start to continue to kind of climb your way down and the camera kind of pulls out uh uh pulls out and kind of moves back to that sort of scene uh, as we see another small gust of wind. And with that, we will end tonight's session. We'll see you guys next week.